All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of The Masochist. I credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing the series, but first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck, and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card, and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, so we're back again this week. Uh, last time at the end there, I kind of rage quit. I got angry because uh, we pulled three copies of this UR that is completely and totally like useless in every single way, which is shocking to me of all the cards to pull a Master Duel. But we have to put that behind us now. Uh, this is the deck that we were playing last week. Like I said, I think if we were playing at the beginning of the month, we'd be ab uh, if we were playing at the end of the month, we'd be tearing up with this deck. It's probably the best combo deck that we've made thus far. Of course, we've got our Floodgate deck, or half Floodgate, half Rank 4 deck, and then we've got this deck. Uh, I saw that some of you guys are putting, like, you know, you gotta start playing cards that uh, win going second. It's like, the reality is, we really don't have any. Like, there's nothing that we can really do. Like, our best cards are, like, Lightning Vortex. That's that's about as good as it gets for our cards. I mean, we have you know, some Kaijus, like Godarla, but for the most part... This is, this is what we're playing for the most part until we get more going second cards that are usable. But uh, let's give this normal Monster Mash deck a try again. Alright, so here's our hand. It's actually not looking too bad. We have Buzzsaw Shark. We actually have full combo. They're playing a 40 card deck. So they're playing more cards than we are. We actually have access to Mr... They're going to maxi us. So there goes there goes any, any, any fun we were going to have. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess we just go Buzzsaw Shark here and activate Buzzsaw Shark. Target itself. Unfortunately, we have to do this. We're going to summon the right hand shark out. And we're going to overlay into Crooked Cook. Throw that in defense and call it a day. I mean, that's that's all we, the best we've got here. I mean, unfortunately, our opponent maxed us. So I guess we've got a. Uh, we could have actually, you know what we could have done? We could have kept making them draw. How many cards do we have? 37, 36. Okay, we could have kept making them draw under that max C. And then destroyed everything with Crooked Cook's effect. And... Yeah, we should have done that, actually. <laughs> and then they would have had more cards than we do, so we would have won. But right now, they're up in cards. But I mean, I guess we could just sit on this until we draw a Floodgate or something. They're playing Kashtira. That's not a problem whatsoever. Uh, they... This card's unaffected by everything, so Kashtira is fine. And now they're searching. So, okay, as long as they don't have an out to this, I should win. But I guess we'll see. Now they're, they're using Scare Claws. Again, I don't really think that the Scare Claws do anything about this either, truth be told. Uh, they can go full combo. It actually only helps us. If my opponent's going full combo here, just dropping the amount of cards in their deck. Uh, now, the thing about Master Duel is they... The Underworld Goddess does exist. Whether they're playing it or not is going to settle whether or not this game is won by us or them. Uh, so it's either a Kaiju or a Underworld Goddess. And depending on whether they have it or not, we... Alright, so they, they keep going off. And I just realized this card's actually not once per turn. That's kind of crazy. You can The search effect is actually not once per turn. This is the second time he's done it. This card is linked summoning the extra monster zone, add one of the field spell. I didn't even that I did not know that wasn't once per turn. That's kind of crazy. They summon cross sheep. Uh yeah, he's gonna keep going, I guess. Uh, if he can do piercing too, that'll 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 beat us. Piercing will will 100 percent beat us. He's gonna go into the vicious. Yeah. This dude, the vicious dude. But again, as long as he doesn't get into a link monster. Into, into Underworld Goddess, we're, we're pretty much good. I just realized, I'm reading the Scareclaw Tryhard. This card is actually good, and I actually had no idea it was generic. It's actually 
really good. I thought it was more locked to its own archetype, but yeah, all face-up monsters on the field are changed to defense, unaffected by the activated effects of defense position monsters. I mean, that's just kind of crazy. Let's see, what is he doing? Is he doing piercing? If he does piercing, we're cooked. He is doing piercing. So this game might be over. Yep, that's, it's over. He has multiple attacks and he's doing piercing. It's pretty much over. Now he's going to do 51. And yeah, it's pretty much game. Uh, nothing we could really do there. All right, we just lost the coin flip. Our opponent's going first. They're playing Galaxy Eyes. Uh, pretty decent deck. Sets up a pretty nice board. Uh, we have Lightning Vortex, which I guess as long as they don't have Hope Harbinger, we've got some some hope for ourselves. Then we've got a pretty good hand. We have the Mecha Phantom Beast, Tin Goldfish. We've got Ringworm, uh, which is a free summon if we control a non-effect and a Megalo Smasher. So pretty decent. We have at least at least uh, uninterrupted we have at least a uh, uh, what's his name we have at least a crusader avermax to go into uninterrupted but i guess we'll have to see what our opponent ends on they're just gonna scoop it up all right i honestly that was a pretty solid hand on our part i we could have really comboed off there and we had the lightning storm so i would have discarded tin goldfish and then comboed off with what's left um uh, Good hand overall, but didn't need it. Uh, we've got two legacy tickets and some free gems. All right, we could definitely use some really, really good pulls right now. So let's see what we get. Because we haven't been pulling much of anything that's super usable lately. Like, we've been pulling like moderately usable stuff that's not usable. It's a UA card, Hand of Six Samurai, I don't think it's usable. Uh, yeah, it's not usable. Uh, Gen X Alley, probably not usable. Parallel Panzer, I don't think, yeah. Equip to a Link Monster. Uh... Yeah, I don't think that's usable for us. Uh, this card's just not that good and a little bit slow. I mean, it's not, like, terrible because it's continuous, so it can summon a token every single turn. So I guess that's not bad. In a really slow deck, that would actually be decent. So I guess we could keep this in the background. It's really not, like, terrible. Uh, this isn't a bad card. We just don't really have a deck that really uses it. If it's normal or special summon target, one monster on the field, banish it. Uh, not bad. Uh, you can banish one empowered warrior monster in your graveyard, target one card on the field, destroy it. So that works with our our pendulum monster, the one we discard, that, that monster. Let's see what we've got under here. Terror of Trishula. I've never even, I don't even know what this does. It's a nice barrier card. Uh, depending on Ice Barrier, Synchro Monsters, we, we don't have any, so we can't really do that. And then BES Big Core MK2. I think this card is actually good. Let me read it real quick. This card's really not actually bad. It really isn't. It's just essentially a free 2400 attack special summon. I mean, if you control the monsters, you can normal summon this card. Oh, yeah, uh, I guess it's a uh, normal summon. When this card is special summon, place three counters, can't be destroyed by battle. If this card is remove one counter. Oh, never mind. It's not that good. It destroys itself, so it's not that good. All right, so that's not that good. It looks cool, but not that good. Uh, this we can't use. Probably good. Uh, this is a decent card. Uh, this um, Dwimmered Hope is actually not is an interesting card. It's a little slow. Maybe in our control deck it could really be usable because we can banish one monster in our own graveyard, summon a token every single turn, which under a Floodgate could actually be kind of good. And uh, it just lets us like summon a token, summon a token, summon a token over the course of a few turns. And, and it's really not bad because we put monsters in the graveyard pretty easily. Uh, it's definitely something to consider. The rest of these cards aren't um, super usable for us. All right, let's open these legacy tickets. See what's, see what's up in here. We need something good. I can't go on with these, these other cards. This is a good card. During the main phase, if the turn player successfully conducts their third summon becomes the end phase another floodgate card it just never ends for us it never ever ends for us we just keep getting floodgates it which we keep getting floodgates uh it this is basically like summon limit it, and it's actually better in a certain ways than summon limit it literally just ends the turn uh so they can summon in main phase two but then they'd have to be smart enough to go to main phase two which misses the battle phase uh they can summon as much as they want in main phase two but not in main phase one now the good thing is uh I mean, if we had something like a Metaverse, this card would be absolutely sick because they could do like two summons, activate a card that would summon, and then we Metaverse. The summon happens, turn ends. Like that would be just really, really good. Uh, this is a fine card. Another Floodgate for us. Second booster, never heard of this. 
this is not terrible. I mean, it's it's playable. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna use it, but it's like a playable card. It, it tributes itself, makes a monster gain 15. A little slow, a not happening, and muscle medic a second copy. It's a warrior that's 2400 normal summon. It's not bad. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's not bad. If, for those of you who always tell me to play, like, the Mech Knights, like, this is almost, like, objectively better in certain ways than the Mech Knight. It's 2200, I mean to say. Because uh, it's just, you just drop it, it's 22. And some of the Mech Knights we have are just, like, 2000 flat. And it's not like we have rank 8 plays to make with the Mech Knights anyway. Uh, so we can use, like, Marauding Captain plus this. Or we can use, like, Goblinberg plus this. And we can just summon these out for free. Uh, but even then, we really don't need this card. And then Earthbound Spirit is not yeah it's not really usable for us either all right we just won the coin flip our hands looking pretty solid here so i think we've got as long as they don't max see us we're, we're we're doing pretty well so we're going to activate this we're going to get a token doesn't seem like they have a maxi in circulation so now we're just going to go into the link place link spider drop the link spider over here activate that Unfortunately, I mean like our hand is decent, but not like phenomenal if We had like IP it'd be crazier, but I mean it's it's a decent hand uh, I think we go into a link two now because we don't have access to the other stuff. So, yeah, I think we go to link two route and we go one and two We need a real if we can get a really good link two, that'd be crazy, but I mean I mean uh, the best we've got right now is a Crusader Avermax that's protected by this uh, that's the best we've got, and that's what I'm going to summon. I guess we can go Zeta, too. But, like, it's Zeta or Crusader Avermax with protection, I think. The Crusader Avermax with protection is probably better than Zeta. So now we just link these two away. Summon the Lamp for Lankus right there. And go right into Crusader Avermax. And then we've got decent follow-up. We've got Witch of the Black Forest to search pretty much anything. And it just depends on what our opponent has. Uh, not the best end board in the world. I mean, again... This is one of those decks where, like, against Blue Eyes, I think it could be really good. Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, stuff like that. But this guy's playing a meta deck. I'm pretty much cooked here because a meta deck can out a Crusader Avermax. And this guy's starting off with Pot of Prosperity, which really opens your mind as to what this could be. It could be pretty much any meta deck, honestly. We're gonna It's going to reveal to us in a moment here, but it's a, it's a pretty wide range of what it could be. He banished six, so it's probably something where the extra deck matters less. It's Labyrinth, the absolute bane of our existence and he's got the destructive Durama karma cannon which totally outs everything we have on the port right now uh i hope he doesn't know that i hope he's a fool but this card legitimately just outs the crusade avermax 100 percent because any link mo link monsters can't go to defense so they just get sent to graveyard and i guess we get to shuffle away but this, of all of the decks in Master Duel that I want to play the least against, this is number one on the list. Now he's going to add the Stovey. Which, okay, he adds the Stovey. Not the end of the world. I'd rather him add the Stovey than the card that outs Avermax. I mean, truth be told, though, at the same time, they've got the big Welcome Labyrinth. That card can also just out Avermax, and Avermax won't go to the graveyard. It'll go back to the extra deck, so it, it won't really help us. But we're we're a little bit in trouble here. See, this this deck is good when you draw like a little bit of a combination of Floodgates plus Floodgates plus a way to get to Avermax. It can be quite good. But when it just gets it gets to Avermax, it's kind of underwhelming, as as we'll probably see here. Grand Horn of Heaven's a little late. I does Grand Horn of Heaven do anything against this deck? I literally think it does nothing against this deck. I'm not even joking. I, I don't think it I don't think it does a single thing against this deck. <laughs> uh this is summoned off a of card effect. All the monsters summon off a of trap effects. Uh I don't think that there's a single Yeah, I don't think that there's a single card that can be affected by Grand Horn of Heaven in the entire Labyrinth deck. Which, again, this is one of those cards where I'm, like, on the fence about playing because unless they're summoning a Link Monster or a Synchro Monster or an x Monster, it does nothing. And I'm starting not to like cards that are specific to certain summoning mechanics because, unfortunately, we've been having wildly bad luck lately where it's like, if we have Phantasmate, they are not playing a Link deck. 
Uh, if they have, if we have Grand Horn of Heaven, they're playing like, like Dark Magician, and they're just summoning it off of Eternal Soul. Uh, we're just we're just having really, really like, if we play Light and Prison Mirror, they're playing a Dark deck. Like it, it's been, it's been a little bit uh, unlucky lately, or just kind of in the beginning too. I mean, I guess we've been a little unlucky. Well, this can't go on. It can't go on forever. So I guess we'll have to see what happens here. Alright, they're going to set Ice Dragon's Prison, which is another out for our monster. Uh, basically, any Cybers plus this is going to out our monster, so that's that'll that'll cook. That'll basically cook us, and then again, this is a non-inherent summon. He's going to put that back in his hand, and then he's going to destroy a card, non-targeting, and then, yeah, he's, I, honestly, this is just, I'm not winning this. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not winning this. For those of you that tell me, don't surrender... I am not winning a grind game with Labyrinth, where one of my cards is dead, the other card is a regular level 4, we've got a random monster, and they're, they're going plus 4 every single turn. We're, just, we're not winning that, there's no way we're winning that, I'm in gold, losing doesn't matter, I don't want to hear it. Alright, we just managed to win this coin flip, uh, our hand's looking okay, our hand's looking okay, we've got... Got this card, which is pretty good. And going to the level 6, we've got the Analyzer. Small World, which we can small world into something. Yeah, we definitely can. And then we've got Crackdown. So we could definitely small world into something. We could actually just go into Time Thief. But this is not a very spell trap focused deck. So going into Time Thief doesn't really help. Because it's like Time Thief and Crackdown. So not enough. Um... Alright, I think I have a little plan here. So we're going to go into Small World, and we're going to use the Animancipator Analyzer. We need to get Lee World Chalice Justicar, which is a level 2. I don't know if we have a way to get to it, but i got to see what the typing is. Uh, let's see, where is it? Lee. Alright, we got to get to Lee the World Chalice Justicar. Do we have a fairy in here? That's the question. 2,000 defense and low attack fairy. Alright, so it turns out we actually can't search the, the World Chalice Just a card. We don't have anything that bridges to it right now. We don't have anything, so we're not going to be able to summon it. But we might be able to summon something else, so I'm going to try to work that out right now. I think our best bet is to summon another normal monster, get another normal monster. So I'm just going to pick uh, a random normal monster, and it should let me go to another one. Yeah, so we're going to go to the Mecha Phantom Beast. I think that's actually the best one for us is Mecha Phantom Beast because that'll let us combo for a little while. So we're going to Mecha Phantom Beast and then we're going to summon a token and we're going to switch. We're going to also special summon the Rimbrum out, which if we had a level 9 right now, that would be crazy. I just realized. Oh, shoot. I just realized we can go into the Transcendosaurus. You guys think that would be good? But if I go into this, I don't have any normal monsters in Graveyard because the token's just going to vanish. Uh, but we can put a normal monster in Graveyard, actually. That's fine. Should I go with this just to play something new? I think I should. I'll do that instead of the uh, the usual route. So I'll go into this to go into Transcendosaurus. And then we'll be able to special summon a token from the Graveyard. Yeah, we'll summon a token from the Graveyard. The token can be used for anything. So we'll summon that out. It is a tuner, I believe, too, which is kind of cool. We did, we already did normal summon, so now we're going to special summon, make it into a link spider, and then we're going to be able to special summon the metal out onto the field. Now, the issue is we can't really do much else here, uh, but I thought it was pretty cool overall. I mean, we've got, we've got some cool plays there, uh, but the whole point was to put a uh, normal into the graveyard, so I think now we just go... I guess Brute Enforcer has the most... Whoa, there. Never mind. Not Brute Enforcer. I'm going to say Brute Enforcer, but I guess we just go into the Land for Lankus. And we put the... Uh, I just realized Gold Drivers and go to Graveyard anyway because he's a stupid pendulum. Uh, so this just sets and then passes. All right. That sucks. Completely forgot. He doesn't go to Graveyard. Our opponent's going to set one monster. I mean, this is looking good. 
I'm, I'm happy to see it. I did, I did squander a little bit. He, I did set this, uh, I did, unfortunately, with this stupid gold driver. So our opponent's playing some absolute nonsense right now. Uh, level limit area B, snake syndrome, uh, I don't know what's going on here, but link monsters seem to be the play, so I should not have gone into this, but it's whatever, we'll, we'll figure it out. We always do, so we're good. We're going to do something here. We have the right hand shark, which isn't really helpful in any way right now. To switch to defense. I mean, I guess we can go into something here. I guess we'll, we'll find out what we do. We can go into two link monsters for sure. So we can go into Brute Enforcer. He's going to activate the secret barrel. We can go into two link monsters and Gravity Bind. Okay, so now I know most of his cards, which is good. So Gravity Bind and this actually only stop certain things they they only stop level four monsters uh level level four but not rank four and uh so that's pretty good i think we go into brute enforcer we're actually going to link away our giant monster here in the end anyway i mean it's like we got it for free whatever and uh, i think we go into crusade avermax because it can't be targeted just in case he has like like, I don't know what this could be. Not Mirror Force, but hopefully it's not Mirror Force because Crusade Avermax does lose to Mirror Force. But hopefully it's like a uh, uh, Magic Cylinder, maybe. If it's a Magic Cylinder, we should <sighs> wash him along. I mean, we literally have the out because it's right here, but I'm going to save it. I'm just going to end phase. Yeah, I'm going to end phase. I'm going to just save it because next turn I could just take his Marshmallow with Crackdown. But it's so stupid. Marshmallow of all cards. And this snake syndrome is going to inflict life points every single turn. 200 life points. Well, it'll double every single turn. Doubling each of the standby phases. This is from the show, too. This goofiness. <laughs> it's going to go to end phase, which is fine. Uh, we are going to take this marshmallow on. And, uh, yeah, we're going to make the... good level? This is level 3. The hot uh, marshmallow on. I don't think it really benefits us to... Uh, yeah, we don't really need to link it away, but... We're going to activate this to move things out of the way. And we're going to place this over here. Uh, we can just normal summon this for 800 extra damage. Squish to defense. Okay, so never mind. <laughs> uh, I think I'll just save it. I mean, I guess we can attack with Reprodocus. How much is that? Like 800 attack? Yeah, is that even a point? Uh, I mean, I yeah, I think we just save the Reprodocus. We just save it. Whatever. We'll save the Reprodocus. Do some damage for now. And we'll just pass here. Hopefully we draw a level 4 so we can go into a time thief. But right now our life points are higher than our opponent's. Which is actually quite good because the Dark Snake Syndrome won't kill us. Uh, this is the kind of deck I want to, like, you expect to play in lower ranks. And I'm down for this 1,000% of the time. I would love to play against players like this. Because it's fun. Like, it's actually kind of fun because you have to, like, think and play around the box. We're getting kaiju uh, But the Kaiju is even bigger than our monster. So we're going to activate this to shuffle away something. Uh, I th do we shuffle this face down? Because we could just go into Link Monsters and stuff. Uh, what is really preventing us from playing here? I don't even know. I guess we shuffle away the random, because I don't know what it is. And then we just make a Link Monster and keep attacking. He's going to go to end phase. I'm, I'm actually down with him burning us and himself a little bit. So now we make... So now we can make a rank 4, which isn't stopped by either of these. And then we can Link away... So this is going to get changed to defense, and then we just go into the rank 4, not uh, link 4, but we can go into a rank 4. In terms of rank 4s, Sue Ship is pretty good, because he can start wiping things out. And if we wipe enough things out, we can attack him with his own Jizukiru. So I think that's actually probably the best. So we summon this out. I know technically, the... Uh, the better one would have been the the other car. The better one technically would have probably been Time Thief, but I don't go into this monster enough. So I'm going to pop this and end here, and our opponent's going to burn both of us again, which is nice. And we have him down on card advantage, which is saying a lot. Our deck has no advantage loop, by the way. That's, our, that's the main issue with our deck. I think it's actually quite good in terms of its combo potential. It, 
it can spit out like six monsters which i know that's like well for modern decks it's like nothing but like for our deck and where we started considering where we are yeah six monsters is pretty good uh but up oh, and we won again that's fun that's phenomenal i love that uh interesting deck let's go check out his deck too all right so we've got one legacy ticket and the spirit of the mountain which is not a good card all right so this is what our opponent's playing he's playing like a, this is what i call like a classic burn deck it's like a, a little bit of the future a little bit of the past he's playing secret village of spellcasters he drunk he has some nasty stuff in here that could have gotten really really bad uh he's got judgment of anubis the face down card probably was actually magic cylinder it could have been magic jammer too i mean he loves magic uh cauldron of the old man this is like a classic 100 like old burn deck all right, let's open up this pack. It's another master pack with no glow whatsoever, but last one didn't have a glow and it had a hollow anyway. So I guess we'll see what we get. Cyber Dark Dragon's not useful for us. Um, Ariel, I don't think is useful. Yeah, if it's sent to the grave by card effect, target three cards, yeah, it's not. Again, we just don't have a way to really do that. Toy Vendor, we have a second copy of this. Uh, goes in our deck, the uh, Chaos deck. This is actually good. It's, you just discard to draw a card, and if this card's sent to the graveyard, you can add a adjim card which is pretty good uh for that reason not really usable for us this is i don't even know Dharma dropper this card is really not even that bad with time thief like it really isn't the problem is it's like how do we get this into circulation i guess that's that's the issue with this card the only way i could think maybe like he's good is with like goblinberg i think he's actually kind of good Detach a material from an XYZ monster, target one face of monster, your opponent controls, change the attack to zero, that's pretty good. If he's in the graveyard, we can use him as material instead of detaching material. Again, it's pretty good because sometimes we get a time thief that doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a monster underneath and they activate like Raigeki or something, we just can't get rid of it. Not like a terrible card. Uh Fury of Fire, I don't think is usable. Summon two Salamangrits from your hand to graveyard. We just don't really have a lot of stuff like that. Detonation code. Yeah, you need a topologic link monster, which we just don't have yet. And then uh, another a tie dangle trinity. I think this is our very first tie dangle monster. Uh, but we have a bunch of spells and trap cards. The only card I see being usable here is maybe this Dharma dropper, but toy vendor for sure in our chaos deck. All right, let's open up this legacy ticket. Hopefully, we get something very useful out of this. That would be nice. Let's see what we've got here. We've got ceremonial bell and unibird. Neither of these are really usable for us, so. On to the next one. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand's uh, it's solid. It's definitely a solid hand. I'm trying to see which direction to really go with it. How far can we get with this hand? Honestly, I think no matter what I do, I am getting to... I can get the Crusade A or Max on this hand, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to consider whether that would even be worth it. Because I can, which of the Black Forest, Search Out Crusadia, Arborea, Summon Ankari Fire. I can get to about a Link 3, I believe. And I don't know that that's even really usable. I mean, I don't even know if that's really worth it. Uh, I think Time Thief might be the play here, actually. Yeah, I think we go with our classic play. We normal summon Witch of the Black Forest. I mean, I could have summoned the Mystical Elf too, but I think we just normal summon, special summon this out. Um, and then we go, I believe we just go Time Thief, because I think that that's just the best play. We also could have just Normal Summon the Mystical Elf, and that's probably what we should have done. Um, yeah, Normal Summon Mystical Elf, and then Special Summon the Inari Fire, and we should just pass there. Because we can discard Mystical Elf, but we should have just left the Witch of the Black Forest to discard just in case. But, I mean... This is our classic board, like it's not really that much of a fall off than our usual board. So we're going to activate the Time Thief to grab a material off of the top of their deck. Hopefully it's a trap or a spell. Uh, that's not good to see. I mean, it's a spell, it's good to see, but it's bad to see because it's a uh, emergency teleport, which means a super duper combo deck is, is incoming right now. All right, they're going to normal summon the Punk. In the past, I found that if you banish the first punk that they normal summon, oftentimes it can actually totally end their turn and just kind of derail them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because in the past, this has been a technique that has worked for us. That's exactly what I'm going to do. 
Uh, he's going to activate an effect that draws him a card. I mean, okay, I mean, again, this is the whole point. I'm trying to get rid of the punk so he doesn't combo into more stuff. So now I'm going to discard the magical elf and banish that monster. So we'll see if it worked, but in the past, like I said, that has ended the punk turn. And he's going to keep comboing off, so it probably is not going to end this punk turn. All right, he's going to fusion summon with the Yuki Yoi. So this is, I mean, we're going to we're going to deal with it no matter what, we're going to deal with it. So he's going to go into the carp. I also should have I probably should have actually banished this monster if I'm being honest. Yeah, this is the monster I probably should have banished. Like just quick effects some on summon just banish this card. I don't know why. I, so like I said, last time I prematurely did it, it ended up being quite good. Uh, but this time I might have just, again, just done it prematurely. I think next time I'll just save it for the carp. I think the carp is usually, it's you, the carp is usually the right card both to ash, to uh, like call by the grave. It's the best card to ash. And in this case, it was the best card for us to sim simply Paleozoic Dinomiscus uh, target, banish it before you can activate the effect. It's not a quick effect, so I should have just saved it for this card. And now I think... Uh, we dug ourselves a hole here because he's just going to do full punk combo and finish us off. Our opponent's gone into Crimson Blader. I'll be honest with you, I did not expect this. Because our monster is not level 5 or higher. So I, I don't know why you would... I don't know why you would go into this card. I mean, it's a generic rank 8. I would use this card if we pulled it for sure because, I mean, I don't know about for sure. I would use this card if we pulled it. Are right, they going to go to battle phase? Uh, honestly, this was a lot less than what I expected our opponent to be able to accomplish. I'm going to on attack. I'm going to activate the redoer. If he has ash, he has ash. I mean, we're kind of screwed, but yeah, he has ash. I mean, of course, he has ash. Uh, yeah, it sucks for us, but. The fortunate thing is that we don't have any level 5 or higher monsters in our deck other than one. We have one level 5 or higher monster and it is just the uh, the one that banishes in our opponent's graveyard. I forget, it's a Magnum, a Bestial Magnum. So as long as we don't draw that, we're good. But this is absolutely not what I expected our opponent to go into with the punk stuff. I... I I misplayed a little, but it's whatever. Now he's going to go into probably the Psychic End Punisher. Yeah, Psychic End Punisher. And I don't really know how to deal with this guy. This guy's unaffected by all of our card effects. You can pay a thousand target one card. Banish them. I mean, at the start of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack. You difference in life points. I mean, that all those effects are really good. I, I, I don't know why he even... Alright, he's going to go to end phase. Unfortunately, he perfectly played around Tiamaton. How? Why? I don't know. Yeah, he played around Tiamaton perfectly. Um, the only card he has, he has restart your engine down here. Which, I mean, again, we don't really, there's nothing that we can do. There's nothing, we can... he just happened to play around it perfectly. Where no matter where I summon, he doesn't have two cards in a column, and to restart your engine will force you know like cards to be summoned. So this one we lost fair and square. It's my fault. I should have banished the carp instead of uh, the normal summon. Okay, we just won the coin flip. Our hand's looking pretty solid. By the way, I switched decks. <laughs> I uh, I just want to give this deck kind of uh, another another try here because it does it does put in a lot of work. So we've got memory loss, barrier statue, dimensional fissure, and the barrier statue. So our hand is. I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. I mean, this is a pretty good hand. Uh, Dimensional Fissure beats a lot of decks. So does Barrier Statue. So we're going to Barrier Statue, set Memory Loss, activate Dimensional Fissure. I think that should be good enough. I, 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 I mean, we don't have any Battle Protection, but this is pretty solid here. I wish we could pull more Barrier Statues because then I can just build a deck around Barrier Statues. I can put as many Battle Traps as I want and not have to worry about... Like a Tine Thief engine or anything like that. Like I could literally just play just battle traps. Bear statues, battle traps. And honestly, I think battles battles battle traps and barrier statues probably carry us to it probably carry us to like what in the world is that? <laughs> what the heck just happened? He's gonna set and then activate double summon. And he's gonna set another card here. 
which I mean, yes, he's double summoning already. Our opponent's going to set five. Uh oh, they're playing self TK. I haven't played against self TK in a long time, actually, because I spent the majority of last season in platinum. And I got to platinum very early. And then I was up in like platinum four and platinum three. So I actually didn't spend a lot of time playing against self DK. So you know, it's pretty good. Uh, self DK is unfortunately throughout the entire ladder. You, you can, it's unavoidable. It's literally on every single aspect of the ladder. So start to finish, it's all, it's all throughout the ladder and it stops at platinum three and then there's no more self DK. But there's self DK from rookie all the way to platinum all the way to Platinum 4, there is self DK all throughout there because after Platinum 4, if you lose, you start to de rank, whereas with other things, you can't really de rank. So now we're going to beat them real quick and I'll cut back in when we, we have won. All right, we just won that duel. Uh, I'll be honest with you, playing against self DK can sometimes be like, like torture. Uh, they take so long to do every single play, even if they don't have any plays because they're a bot. Uh, but yeah, we just won that one. All right, so we've got. No legacy tickets, but we've got 10 gems. Still have a ton of gems, so I really didn't need the gem. All right, let's open a master pack. I really need a good one. This is our third one in a row with no glow. So hopefully there's something hiding inside because we really need something good. Uh, we got plain pearly. We've already got that. I don't know why I clicked on it. We already got that. Uh, Amber man with the crystal version. I think you need dark on the field. Yeah, on the field zone. Otherwise, send this card to the graveyard. Uh, not good. Uh, Beast tamer, elder. Which I don't, we don't have enough Ritual Beast to really play that. Uh, we've got Theory on Charge. Send one Theory on card or Argo System. Draw two cards. Not a bad card, but we don't have any of the components for that. Uh, Ghost Lancer, the Spearman. This is the Fusion, I believe, the Fusion Monster that works with. No, never mind. Alright, so this card's actually not bad at all. I think this goes in our Dark Deck. Not our Dark Deck, our Chaos Deck. The, the Benjamin deck. So this might go into that deck. It's a free special summon if our opponent controls a monster. So solid. I actually think Phoenix Rhino Wars is another card that's solid. I forgot I have this. I guess this is our second copy. If we get more Burning Abyss cards, we can play it. Uh, this is a card, Noble Arms. I think this is an adventure token card. That's what it is. Unfortunately, we don't have. So I would actually play like a small adventure token engine, but we need like, you know, Fateful and. All of the other stuff, the Faithful Adventure, the Griffin Rider, all that other stuff. And Nurse Dragon Maid, I don't think is really usable uh, for us. It, it can target a level 4 lower Dragon Maid monsters from the graveyard. We don't have any others, really. But this is our first Dragon Maid main deck monster, so I guess that's pretty cool. I think Ghost Lancer is the only really usable card in the immediate moment out of the stuff that we pulled. All right, next game. Hand's looking pretty good. Uh, we lost a coin flip, but we're going second. It's not really a problem because this hand is really solid, actually. We've got two trap cards that we can set in a column where our opponent puts a monster for the Iron Dragon. We have Nahata and Goblinburg, so we have a free special. We have This is a special summon itself, or this can special summon it, plus if we draw more. We have some good stuff. We actually have enough to get... If we draw one more monster, we have enough to get to an Avermax in our control deck, which is really really awesome if we want to go in that direction plus we get to plop plus we get to get a bunch of other stuff what is this card reptilian i don't think i've ever seen anybody play reptilian that's crazy i've never seen anybody play reptilian the field spell i've never even seen this field spell. i didn't even know they had a field spell all right our opponent's going to summon nova summoner and they're going to activate heritage of light i think we have this heritage of light card actually uh, it's not the worst card in the world actually all right, so let's see what we get here. Uh, we get a memory loss, so not perhaps what we expected. We can pop everything in a column. I think we can just out this entire column right here. And then we can just special summon. So I think we can give up one of our cards. I don't really think power frame is going to help us much, so I'm going to set power frame. I'm going to activate the iron dragon. I'm going to summon it here. And then I'm going to blow up this entire co column. And then I'm going to normal summon the Goblinburg. And now I get to special summon out the Nahata. Although Nahata I could have special summoned right away. But it's whatever. So we summon out Nahata. Now we can go into a rank 4. Or we can go into Ouroboros. We did make him once. But he didn't help in that situation. I actually think 
Probably Time Thief plus him should be good enough. I don't think we need to do much more. Yeah, Time Thief, a couple of trap cards is, is, is more than good enough. So I think we go Time Thief plus Goblinburg. Get into... Yeah, Time Thief, Goblinburg. This column's turned off and two cards face down isn't too bad. I could have gone into Suship too and then pop this, but I think this should be good enough. So we'll attack and attack. Our opponent has a response to that. Okay, let's see what's going on now. Okay, they're going to activate the God Slime. This took a weird turn. God Slime is pretty decent, like just generically decent, because he can block any attack. Like right now, I can't even attack. So if I attack, he's going to gain attack equal to whatever, anything. Actually, you can make this card gain defense. Why did he summon it in attack mode then? I can just attack over it. He only gains defense, not attack. So if I attack, he's going to... Yeah, he's going to just lose the monster, isn't he? Or he's going to activate the... Yeah, he only gains attack, so that just... You just lost that monster for nothing. Alright, whatever. Uh, so I guess we just set two and pass now. That is... That is odd. I don't know what's going on. Ah, oh, man. I, I just looked up and I realized this is a bot, most likely, because look at the name. Sometimes I'm like sitting here dueling my heart out and then I realize halfway through it's a bot. I like these new bots better than the self TK bots because it like they just put random things into their deck kind of like my deck and then they just kind of go at it. And in certain situations it can actually be like mildly competitive uh, but most of the time it is still a bot and it's going to go nowhere but I mean it's it's whatever. Uh, fortunately the bot stuff's going to stop at some point because as soon as you get past platinum four no more bots anyway all right he's going to summon nova summoner again kind of interesting to see a bot perform and what it's going to do all right the bots attacking you know nova summoner is going to be able to uh summon more more nova summoners and more shining angels if he's got them so i guess it's like a self otk bot i guess you could call it now he's going to summon the starry knight Flamel. Not, not a terrible card, actually. I think it's a newer... Is this a newer one? Yeah, it looks like a newer one. Actually, they're all newer ones. Yeah, it's a somewhat new archetype. But, uh, yeah, the Flamel. Alright, so now we won the duel. Uh, obviously, it's a bot. Nothing much to it. You just kind of attack and hope they don't draw anything crazy. But, yeah, let's go open another, another, uh, another pack there. Alright, so we just ranked up. I mean, ranking up in gold means nothing because you can't derank anybody anyway. Uh, two legacy tickets. Okay, let's open a master pack. None of them have been glowing all day. Fortunately, the cards we really want aren't even hollow. Uh, another subterra and one we already have. So we now have four subterra cards. Nemesis flag, so close. You know which ones we need. We need the wind one. Nemesis, I believe it's corridor. Uh, we need the wind one so badly. But now we have two copies of this. Well, this one actually does... Um, it, during the main phase, add a nemesis. So this search is the one that we're looking for. So that's at least good. Uh, then we've got an abyss script, which we already don't have. Uh, we've got the Frula Rubka. I've never seen or heard of this card. Uh, Destruction and Sword Memories. Don't have the cards to play that. This is a, F a Rika card. I don't think we have the stuff to play. This is not a bad card. You just don't really have a use for it. Uh, we've got another copy. We pulled this on day one, and it almost helped us win a game. Uh, pretty cool card. And then we've got Deskbot 004, which, again, is not usable. Other than the Nemesis Flag, maybe the sub tear one day. Uh, none of these are really usable, so beyond this point, they're just kind of not really usable for us. All right, let's open these Legacy Tickets. Hopefully, we can get something out of here. There's still so many things that we need, like more Barrier Statues. This is the only place to get them, is Legacy Tickets. Uh, Magical Cavalry. It's a... Uh, Three scale, not bad. Unaffected by monster effects except pendulum monsters. Not actually bad, right? Unaffected by all monster effects. Uh, stop defense. What is this? A dinosaur? Yeah, I mean, we can search it with uh, one of the dinosaurs that we have. Sp stop defense isn't really usable unless you're on, like, the third episode of, of the show. Otherwise, it's kind of dead for us. Uh, then we've got not a bad card, actually. Soul Purity and Light. It's basically just Banish Two Light, Summon It. Probably goes in our Chaos deck, if we're being honest. And then we've got the Air Eater, uh, a monster that feeds on oxygen. Yeah, 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 not really that good. Uh, but yeah, Solar Period of Light's actually a decent card. All right, so I'm going to update this deck a little bit. This is our Chaos deck. I'm going to add the Solar Purity and Light just temporarily, just because I think it can be usable. Nemesis can be usable as soon as we get 
any sort of other nemesis cards i think this can really really be useful as soon as we get corridor we're, we're good to go we're in we're on the money i think this card's pretty good the ghost lancer can be quite good in this deck and then we got toy vendor too i think toy vendor is another card we can put to toy vendors it's basically like a one-sided uh, a one-sided dark world dealings which i think is cool because i think it's just what is it like draw and discard it's pretty good yeah you can discard a card draw a card show it to your opponent and if it's a fluffle monster you can do other stuff but we don't have fluffles uh but yeah i think that's actually quite nice if i if i'm being honest and then of course we pulled our second copy of this the brand that regained we've also got the peaceful planet that can search out the visa star frost and if any tuner gets destroyed we get the special summon it back i think all that's good a lot of stuff has changed about this deck that's quite nice special hurricane we've got and discard a card destroy all special summon monsters on the field so we essentially have like two copies of lightning vortex because let's be honest most monsters most of the good decks will summon a bunch of special summon monsters anyway so this card's good the deck is really looking good and then we've pulled cosmos since then like new cosmos like delta shuttle i think we pulled and we didn't have before so we got to keep an eye on this deck it's it's looking better and better every single day all right we just won the coin flip our hand is again looking pretty solid we've got purple poison run ryu which means we have time thief plus paleozoic plus bestial magnum so we have a pretty decent hand here um, definitely a lot we can we can make a time thief and a paleozoic so i think i will give up it doesn't matter who i give up i'll i'll, I'll summon the purple poison i'll special summon ram ryu and then i'll go into a time thief because so right now that is the best we've got so we time thief it out summon out the time thief and then we've got the Paleozoic and the Bistial Magnuma to, to follow up with if we need to. So overall, pretty decent hand. Just depends on what we grab off the top of our opponent's deck. Time Thief is one of those cards that's like really good, but it just depends on what you get and what deck you're playing against. Because in a lot of situations, um, it just kind of protects itself, which is good board presence, if you, especially if you have a Floodgate in circulation. Uh, but there's certain situations where we get a monster off the top of our opponent's deck it just kind of does nothing we got a spell that's pretty good forbidden chalice which is a card we also play uh forbidden chalice is obviously very good because we get the draw during our opponent's turn and we have like i said we have multiple interruptions that are kind of contingent on a few different things uh there's no point right now to do anything with this so i am going to just I am going to just I there's not I can't banish it because it's a quick effect anyway, so it'd be it'd be worthless to do it. He's gonna tribute to do this. He's gonna summon Mo Yi. Now, the truth is it really depends right now. He's got another Mo Yi in hand. It depends on if he's got I'm not sure if this guy's got another copy of uh all right, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I guess we just leave it there. We let this go through, and we'll put the chaining on. We'll let him summon the token, and I think usually the right thing to do is to banish this token, uh, because if I banish this, like the token locks him into synchro summons, but if I banish this, um, he can still make 10 plays, which is going to be bad for us. So I think we activate the Paleozoic Dinomiscus, and we banish the token because that'll prevent him from getting into the next monster. Uh, we'll discard the Dragoodies. I don't think that's helping right now. And then we'll banish that. So now he has to kind of do what he can with what he's got right now. If he's got the uh, sheet, whatever the other guy is, the one that you discard and special summon, I forget his name. it has got Taya. It happens. There's nothing we can do. He doesn't have anything in the graveyard, though. It's like, what is he going to allow? What does this do? Banish one soul, sword soul card in the graveyard. He's got none, so. And these are... This is not a sword soul card, right? This is just Ecclesia, the Incredible Virtuous. Yeah, he has no sword soul cards in his graveyard anyway, so that's fine. I mean, maybe he's got a rank four. I don't know. But he doesn't have any sword soul cards, so. We'll see. We'll see what he's able to produce here. He's going to go directly to end phase. I'm going to activate both of these. I'm going to activate Time Thief Redoer to draw a card and i'm going to activate the bestial magnumut uh, because i want to banish the incredible ecclesia and then i'll draw a card off of the redoer banishing ecclesia doesn't matter but there's nothing better to banish in that deck so now we're going to activate this to draw a card detach no need to detach anything else we're going to draw threatening roar okay whatever 
And then we're going to draw something else. Not draw something, we're going to search something else. I think we're going to add the Tiamaton. Oh, we have no choice, I guess, because the other one's material underneath here. And now we get to Special Summon. I don't think we have enough for game. Ledger Book's not... Ledger Book will prevent the next card, which is good. All right, so now we're going to get the Redoer. We're going to get a monster. It's going to be another Moe. So one Moe is right here, one Moe is right here, and one Moe is in his hand. So we know where all his Moe are. Uh, we're going to set this, and we're going to Special Summon Tiamaton in this column here to pop this, to pop his Moe. And now, I don't think that there's really anything... See, if we had Chaos Angel, we'd be cooking right now. We'd Chaos Angel... And we'd have... Oh, we won! Alright, beautiful. We would have won regardless, though, because... Honestly, we had the Ledger Book, and the Ledger Book would just allow us to banish the token, and the token never comes back anyway. So, he would have been in the same position that he's in right now. So, regardless, we probably would have won that duel. And we had Threatening Order to protect ourselves. Fantastic win! We just absolutely... We just crapped all over that. Uh, just destroyed that, that uh, sword. So, that was a well-deserved win. So, we've got two packs and blue eyed silver zombie uh blue eyes is cousin this is our opponent's deck it is just a straight up starter deck it's solid though i mean like this starter deck is pretty good it's got access to uh supreme sovereign which is a really good card it's got uh chi shao like it's it, this is a solid starter deck it's probably one of the better starter decks in the game all right let's purchase a master pack wow again no glow but i mean again we can't really complain but it's just kind of shocking that there is no oof hello what's going on over there wildfire is a blaze accelerator card we don't have the cards to play that yet uh melfi playhouse i don't think that we really have the materials or things to use that okay we've got the armed dragon the armored dragon level four dragon probably going on our level four deck when this card destroys the most my best special summon one level five or lower wind monster from hand deck or graveyard that is actually really 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 good for the dragon deck like outrageously good because that can summon I, I don't know what we can summon with it but that's that's good i mean that's just a solid card to play uh, i could summon from the deck too and a slow down game state pretty good tree otter i don't think it's really gonna be usable for us target one face of monster you control against a thousand attack it could be itself yeah but eh, you need another beast to do that so not really that great shell knight is actually a decent card so this goes in our little fossil pile that we've got building but I don't think that we have enough stuff to really play this. Uh, then we've got another uh, Mech Lord card. Probably not going to be workable. And then we've got the Sylvan Tree. Which again, I don't think is going to be really usable for us. Yep, That's not really usable. And then let's check what this UR is. It is Solemn Judgment. Wow, that's good. God damn, that's good. You know what? We opened so many crappy packs. The last, like, two and a half episodes, we pulled, like, a bunch of those crappy Karibo cards. This is an outrageously... This can basically prevent... It's probably, like, one of the best cards we could have possibly pulled, like, anywhere. This is one of the best URs we could have possibly pulled. Like, if, if, if you ask me which bundle i could buy if i could only buy one bundle i would literally buy the solemn judgment bundle because it would be the best one for our deck it would be the best one because like one ash blossom is not going to change the tides of anything but like this actually changes things because barrier statue judgment all of the floodgates we've got this is insane this is an insane 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 pull one of the best pulls you could probably ask for this is outrageous all right let's open our two legacy tickets here hopefully there's something just as good as that judgment because that judgment is a game changer one of the better pulls we could possibly do Skullbird and dd sprites not a bad card but uh, we don't really need it it's not, not for our deck anyway and none of our decks really could utilize that card it's not a bad card though then we've got not gonna work white princess and the yeah black princess thing not really good and breath of life is for rock monsters if we're in ad emancipator format tier zero ad emancipator maybe that could be good but right now that is just not really okay so we're finally upgrading the Yugi Jr. deck, we're putting another counter traps in. So we've got Broken Line, we've got Grand Horn of Heaven, and now I am going to be taking out 
power frame. After all that time, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it in Solemn Judgment. Doesn't mean it's out forever, which means it's out for now. I just think it's uh, Solemn Judgment is just objectively a better card and I can't come up with something other than that to take out because technically all these like Threatening Roar and Dimensional Prison and all this stuff is technically better. Uh, so Solemn Judgment not only gets starred, but it gets added to the deck 100%. Also, I'm going to put a star on the Nemesis flag uh, if we ever pull what we need. Uh, but I got I to gotta remember to keep starring stuff. Also, I'll star this Armed Dragon dude because he can definitely go in our Dragon deck. He seems like he's pretty good. Actually, let me check the Wind Dragons, see if there's anything we can really search. I know we have Armed Dragon level 5. That was our card from a long, 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 long time ago. So Wind Dragon is... Where's Dragon? There it is. So let's see what we have for Wind Dragons. Uh, it, it's any level Wind Dragon, level 5, or lower Wind Dragon. Okay, so Arm Dragon level 5 is literally what we can summon off of that. That is 100% Run Reeves, not bad. This dude's not bad. Dodger Dragon. It's also 1900 attack. And I think that's about it. Uh, this, unfortunately, is level 7. If, if I could summon this, it'd be crazy, but it's level 7 or lower. It's a, li a little slow. But, yeah, I can summon Armed Dragon level 5. So, I mean, I guess that is the best dragon that we can summon. These are from Structure Next, so they don't count. I can summon Armed Dragon level 5, which is a card that we've got from way, way, way back in the day. And then this dude, actually, he's not bad. If this card's normal, special summon target one monster you control. If it does, uh, if it attacks, it does piercing. Target one out of the face of monster chases battle position. Return this card to the hand. This card's actually not bad either. Uh, so we could pot potentially summon this uh, Freedan guy too. So definitely something to keep in mind. We'll save that. We'll actually star him too because he's a... Alright, we just lost a coin flip. <clears throat> Our hand is pretty solid actually. Like really pretty good. Depends what they're playing, but this is a pretty good hand. Uh, we're going to Goblinburg for sure as soon as our opponent allows us to get to where we need to. Uh, we're going to normal summon Goblinburg, activate the effect. Hopefully they don't max see us. But even if they do max see us, it, I mean, it's, we're locked in. There's nothing we can do. We're going to summon out the Dragoodies. And we're going to go into Time Thief. Which, as of right now, is the best that we've got. Again, I can go into other stuff, but I mean, it's, come on. Let's be honest here. Time Thief, he's not an interruption, but he's a potential interruption. So that should usually is good enough. So we're going to Time Thief. Broken line down right down the middle because that's where most people activate things. There can only be one in Forbidden Chalice. And we've got... A floodgate, a negate, we've got uh, an interruption, and time thief. So the deck's getting better in terms of what it can do. I do think Yugi Jr. is probably still our best deck. I like the normal monster deck because it makes me think and it makes me, uh, you know, do, do, it makes me think, which I, I like a lot. But honestly, I think this is still our best deck because we don't have any recursion or advantage in our deck, but especially recursion. Like advantage, we sometimes can get. But we really don't have any advantage. Uh, I mean, rec yeah, we don't have any recursion. That's like our main thing. We do not have any recursion. Uh, he's playing Perform Pal Odd Eyes. We'll see what he's actually playing here. But what I like about Perform Pal players or Pendulum players is they'll place the scales here. But they'll usually place something in the middle like that. Uh, if you control it, you can add an Odd Eyes card. So I don't know if I'll have another opportunity to negate something. So I'm just going to go ahead and Broken Line now. Uh, because it is broken line, you typically try to negate the first thing you see, so that'll get him, let him get to an odd eyes card. But we'll 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 let that slide through. The broken line is usually like a one for one card. It's actually a trap that is usually better going second, because you can see where your opponent sets things, and then you just set it into the column where they set things. But a, a lot of the time, people will activate things in the middle column without even thinking about it, which is good. Lightning storm. So I should have <laughs> I should have held on to it. Hopefully, he picks monsters. Attack position monsters. Thank God he picked monsters because then I could just activate Time Thief. And hopefully he doesn't have an Ash Blossom. If he has an Ash Blossom, he has an Ash Blossom. Listen, he's got me. He's got me beat if he's got an Ash Blossom. But as long as he does not have an Ash Blossom, we should be good here. He's got an Ash Blossom. I am just speaking this all into existence. Uh, now we just, I guess we lose Time Thief. Nothing we can do there. Uh, he's got the Lightning Storm. He's got the Ash Blossom. You can make the argument I should have held for the Lightning Storm, but listen, it happens. There's no way I would have known that he was going to do that. Like, who in their right mind saves a Lightning Storm? 
All right, so our opponent's going to start the Pendulum stuff. Fortunately, with Pendulums, you need a lot of cards in order to play Pendulums. So he's got three cards total. Even if two of them are scales and one's a monster, he's got one monster that he can summon. Uh, of course, he can, like, pop to add, you know, to get some advantage. So you could usually do that. But he's going to activate the Pendulum Zone. I mean, not the Pendulum Zone, the Pen Duelist Alliance. So you can add a Pendulum Monster or Pendulum Spot and Trap card. He's going to add Perform a uh, Pendulum Call. And he's going to go to End Phase. Okay, that's fine with me. I don't even have to activate any Floodgates or anything. We're hoping for a monster. Uh, <laughs> that's perfect. Literally perfect. What monster did he add? Or he added a Spell card. Pendulum Call. Perfect. Literally perfect. Alright, so now we normal summon the Barrier Statue. We just go to Battle Phase and just attack. And there's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh, cards that he can really do anything about. So as long as he has a monster that is 1400 or lower or 1300 attack, we're good here. We're good because we've got the Forbidden Chalice. So as long as it's 1300 and under, we're pretty much good. Even in main phase two, if he can special summon, it doesn't really actually matter because in main phase two, he's not going to be able to destroy the barrier statue more than likely. And then he's got there can only be one to deal with because a lot of his monsters are you know like magicians so they're spell casters obviously he's got dragons in there too because he's activated the other thing but yeah most of them are spell caster or dragons i'm going to discard add two pendulum monsters but he can get to like purple poison and stuff which does suck for us wing dragon of raw interesting <laughs> i can't wait to look at this deck afterwards this is one of those half meta half not meta decks where they've got like a bunch of cards that are terrible and then they've got like yeah it's like a bunch of cards that are terrible and then simultaneously they have like uh, lightning storm and ash blossom it's like like a deck simultaneously has every per magician ever every perform pal magician ever while having lightning storm while having winged dragon of raw so we'll see what he's able to do here he can't pendulum summon unless it's a fire so i don't know if he realizes this but one day he will all right, perfect. It's a monster that's lower than the attack that we need it to be. Perfect. It's a Mirage Dragon. So he's going to probably enter battle phase, and we're going to wait till damage step. All right, he's going to go battle phase. We're going to go on, chaining on. That way we can Forbidden Chalice when we should Forbidden Chalice, and not when we shouldn't. Uh, we're going to Forbidden... Uh, it declares an attack. Now, the problem, it's going to go to the top of the extra deck, so you can Pendulum Summon it out. So he's allowed to declare that attack. Battle step's fine. Damage step. We're going to activate the Forbidden Chalice. Target our own monster. And it's going to obviously destroy his own his monster. And then it'll send it to the top of the extra deck. Now our monster is negated. So he will be able to Pendulum Summon back out this monster. Uh, but. Oh he's going to go to end phase. Oh thank god. Thank god he didn't realize that. That did that. Alright perfect. Small world is totally useless right now because small world unfortunately needs another card to be useful but next turn if we draw a monster it'll be useful small world's good but you know obviously it's a two card combo no matter what it's not like a difficult two card combo because essentially it's just any two monsters but it's a monster plus it so it's not like a two card combo it's like a 1.5 combo like most of the time you'll have a monster but sometimes in the grind game small world can be a little as we're seeing not the best card all right, so our opponent is now in the main phase. We'll see what they're able to do. Again, pendulums, most of the time, they need to pendulum summon. So if they can't, they drew a monster. So that's bad for us. Uh, they drew Actually, they searched this, so it's not really like they drew it. So they're going to be able to uh, destroy our barrier statue by battle. And they do have some decent things here because they have a dragon there. They have a spellcaster here. So they've got some decent lineups that might work. If we can get to a Tiamaton, we'd be in really good shape. Hopefully we can get to a Tiamaton. It's going to attack over our barrier statue. We're going to lose it. It happens. But if we can get to uh, a Tiamaton, is really good against Pendulums, but I never seem to get the right... I never seem to get to. He's going to go directly to end phase. That's fine with me. I don't know if he realizes he can Pendulum Summon this out. Oh, he can't because that's a level 3. <laughs> he can't even Pendulum Summon it out even if he wants to. Uh, we got Crackdown. So this card's dead here. He can't even come out. We have Crackdown, which is pretty good. And I'm going to set Crackdown definitely in the zone because he seems to play middle. He loves the middle. So we're going to set the Crackdown. 
and we're gonna go to end phase if we need to steal something we can and we also that there can only be one what's good about this uh, black fang magician is this card is a uh, uh, this card is a level four so if we draw level four we can go into our own level four then we've got there can only be one so if he summons any other magician we can out the magicians all right he's going to summon purple poison i'm going to go ahead and activate there can only be one so it's force it forces him to out one of them because they're both spell casters and then whatever's left we can just crack down and just take it if we need to that way we don't and since he's sending the monster to the graveyard yeah we don't lose uh, we, don't, we it doesn't get destroyed by battle which is good I think I'm actually just gonna take this damage because it's only 1300 it's really not that big of a deal so I'm, I'm probably just gonna take this damage and I'm gonna just let it slide because next turn depending on what we draw we can uh, depending on what we draw we're good tin goldfish is pretty good if we uh, discard yeah we can now we can go into a rank 4 using his monsters as long as it's not a machine or a spellcaster we can go into a rank 4 which is pretty good I think we can do that I don't know which rank 4 to go into but we can definitely go into a rank 4 we can go into sous ship and start popping things we can probably pop this harmonizing magician and it wouldn't have too big of an impact we can also go into small world and grab something actually if we grab Tiamaton we basically can win this duel the problem is if we we, we grab Tiamaton, we have no way to like get to anything. Yeah, we we have no way to set up Tiamaton the columns, so we wouldn't be able to summon Tiamaton anyway. Tia, Tiamaton literally wins us this duel because if we just block one of these columns, he can't pendulum summon. But I'm trying to like figure out a way to get to him, but I just can't right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Crackdown. Maybe next turn we can get Tiamaton out. We'll put that right here, and then we'll summon the Tin Goldfish. And no effect applicable. So we'll go into this. Uh, we go into what I should have done actually. Now that I'm looking at. It, I should have gone into. I should have probably small world into which of the black forest and the search Tiamaton. I should have done that. And now we just summon this here. This will get stuck here. So if they summon one more monster, Tiamaton's live. Now we go to battle phase and we can pop at least one of the the things. So we can pop the harmonizing magician. I don't think Harmonizing Magician has an effect when pop. Yeah, Harmonizing Magician doesn't have an effect when pop, so we just pop it and nothing happens. Now we just pass on this. We've got the Sioux Ship, plus there can only be one, so it isn't too bad. And our opponent is low on scales, which is good. We're going to activate Pot of Duality in a in an Odd Eyes deck. In an Odd Eyes Performer Pal deck, and they revealed a Slife for the Sky Dragon off the top eye. I love anime duelists. They, they make this game so fun when you've got a deck like this because, I mean, it's just, what can you say? Soul Pendulum, target two cards in your Pendulum Zone, and they're going to end. Okay, so I don't even know why you added that. Dimensional Fissure, pretty good. Dimensional Fissure makes it so his monsters, I believe, will go get banished. So we'll see. We'll see, because they, yeah, we'll actually, we'll, we'll find out, because they're spell cards technically right now. Uh, we're going to activate to destroy this thing. And no, they don't. I guess because they count as spell cards right now. So they don't get destroyed. But if he links them away, they will be banished. And uh, I mean, this this card's not like the best against... If they're on the field, then they, they will get banished. But if they're in the spawn trap card zone, they won't get banished because they count as spawn trap cards. But anime duelists make this game so much more fun than it has to be, honestly. All right, he's going to set one card. And I, we'll see what else he manages to do. I mean, he's playing There Can Only Be One and Dimensional Fissure. <laughs> the game made me out to be a villain. They just keep giving me more and more villain cards. They give me more Floodgates every time. We got the Summoning card, the Summon Limit on a Field Spell. We got Solemn Judgment. Like, all we get is all these villain cards. Like I always say, we're not really the villains. The real villains are the ones that the combo for 10 minutes and then activate Max C afterwards. Those are the real villains. Those are like the people... You can't stand. Yeah, that that was an interesting duel for sure. He can't really he couldn't really get his footing going, but that was that you know, that was by design, of course. Alright, so we've got three legacy tickets. Alright, so this is our opponent's deck. They had exactly one lightning storm. It's a sixty card deck. They had one lightning storm. This is an interesting deck. They've got a bunch of performer pal and odd ice things. They've got two Egyptian gods. Screw obelisk, right? Fuck obelisk. 
Uh, then we've got Winged Dragon of Rossphere mode, Mad Random. Also, we've got Immortal Phoenix, one copy of Rossphere mode, one copy of Immortal Phoenix. They've got the Ancient Chant, one copy. This card to sacrifice three monsters on the field. I don't even know how they're summoning the Immortal Phoenix because they don't have the spell card. So I guess they're summoning it the classic way. Power of the Guardians is a card I would love to play. Actually, a decent card. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting deck. A lot going on, honestly. Okay, let's open a Master Pack. It's glowing. This is our first, I believe, first pack that's glowing all episode. I don't know, because I, I recorded a little bit yesterday. Uh, right off the bat, we've got Artifact Dagda. And we do have some artifacts. Two monsters, generic. This replaces Lamphalancus, 1 million percent. It's more attack than Lamphalancus. It's also a light, just like Lamphalancus. It's a fairy. I don't know if that really helps anything, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a fairy. Uh, let's read a little bit. All right, so this card's definitely 1 million percent replacing Lamb for Lankus. Like, not even, a, like, 1 million percent it's replacing it. Um, if this link, if, if during the opponent's turn, if this Link Summon card is destroyed, you special summon Artifact Monster from your graveyard in defense position. Can't be itself, because it's a Link Monster. Link's monsters can't be summoned in defense position, but, uh, yeah, setting an Artifact. I gotta see what Artifacts we do. We have some Artifacts, but I gotta check... Chateau, Midolce Chateau, not really usable for us. Crystal Beast Carbuncle, not usable for us. I have no idea what this is, but it's a looks to be a, a, a snake fused with Sonic the Hedgehog. This is not a bad card at all. It changes everything on the field to face down to front position, non-targeting. I have no idea how to summon it in our deck. Uh, this is Mayakashi, probably not going to be usable for our deck. Dark Scheme is a Dark World card. This card is would be decent for draw power. It's honestly, number one, it's slow. Number two, it's it, your opponent can negate it. And number three, you have to discard two to draw two. So your opponent, and you have to have, uh, this is not going to be usable. This is a uh, Dream Mirror card. And we don't have enough Dream Mirror cards. And then Fairy Archer, uh, what is that? We have this already. So it doesn't really matter because we already have it. And we're not playing it now. It's a plant support card. But... Dagda is a really good pull, and we're probably going to use it. i got to check what other artifacts we have, but that's actually a really good pull. All right, let's open these Legacy Tickets. Hopefully, we get another Barrier Statue, because they've been winning for us over time. So, let's see. We've got uh, that dude and Mirage Dragon. It's not, like, the worst card ever, I guess. Maybe in our Dragon deck, but it's a little bit outdated. I mean, it's, actually, it's not a little bit outdated. It's really outdated. Uh, so that's not going to work. Solar Ray is burns for 600, I believe, for every light. Yeah, for every light on the face up on the field. Might be usable. Uh, that's probably better. We just got some. That guy was ugly. I don't know who that was. I clicked away by accident. We're going to definitely we're gonna definitely going to do a little U-turn. We can't miss that. That guy looked incredible. Uh, another weird looking card. These are like the OCG weirdo cards that never came out because I've never seen that. Trap of Board Eraser is, um, yeah, if your opponent tries to inflict, you can negate it. Your opponent selects one card from his or her hand, discards it. It's, like, good if our opponent's playing a burn deck. But, obviously, there's no way to, like, guarantee that. I mean, it's good against, like, Sword Soul, for example, but it's if you play against it. Uh, this dude, Neck Hunter, what a weird name. A sickle and fires devastating beams from its eyes. Wow. What an ugly card. What a terrible stat line. And then we've got his cousin right here. I mean, the old. I love the old artworks of the fiends because they really do look like absolute fiends. They look like crackheads or something. Like these guys look weird. The new fiends is like tour guide. It's like a girl and it's, it's like a girl rides a bus. So it's like this is what a fiend looks like in my mind. Okay, so for sure, Lamphalancus is out. He didn't stay long, but he was uh, he was useful while he was there. And then we've got Dagda instead, because Dagda actually is quite decent. It's just any two monsters. And then uh, we've also got to check what artifacts we've got. i got to get the keyboard for a sec. All right, so here are the artifacts that we have. And we actually have a lot of artifacts. I didn't realize we had this many. Uh, we don't have any of the really good ones. It sucks, but we don't. We don't have Moral Talk and we, Scythe. We don't have Scythe. If we had Scythe, we'd be we'd be in business. And we don't have uh, the Lancia, but we do have a Fail Knot and we have Molnir and uh, Unleashed. So let me let me read through these and see if any of these are usable. Okay, so this card basically sets back a artifact monster. It's not terrible. We'll check what Molnir does. These cards literally do the exact same thing. Uh, so, 
almost the same thing. So if this card's destroyed during our opponent's turn, we can summon it back. We can target an artifact in the graveyard and put it in the spawn trap card zone. This one, if it's destroyed during our opponent's turn, we can target an artifact monster in our graveyard and special summon it. So they basically recur artifact monsters. They don't have any of their own like cool effects like Moral Talk and the other ones that I was talking about before. Um, yeah, so they aren't super duper good. But, I mean, they are free summons, and summoning a free Fail Knight 2000 attack isn't too bad. It's just asking yourself is, if it's really worth it, if you're not really... Like, the artifacts that we have aren't don't really make it worth it, but, like, this card has a decent little engine going for it, where we can, if another card is activated, we can just set, like, this from the deck, and then... Well, we have no way to pop it anyway, but I guess it's destroyed during the end phase. It's gonna get destroyed no matter what, and then it has another effect uh, when, if this is destroyed, we can summon back one of these, so it's like... Decent recursion, but it's not I don't think it's good enough where we should be playing monsters It's good enough where we can play this thing uh, Because it's more attack than lamb for Lankus, technically speaking, but I don't think it's good enough where Yeah, the, the only thing that lamb for Lankus has going for it is that it, it works with Nahata But most of the time we just link it off anyway, so Yeah, I think that this is probably slightly better than lamb for Lankus. All right, we just won the coin flip against this fully blue field here. Uh, we have first turn Avermax and or first turn double rank four. I, I don't even know what double rank four we would make, but we have double rank four or Avermax. So let's see what we do here. Honestly, I think the Avermax is probably better, but it's this is crazy. This is our control deck, so to have a, a Turn one Avermax in our control deck is pretty pretty wild. Uh, like I said, we have turn one Crusader Avermax if we want to have that. We also have Hida, but like, what is Hida going to do other than recur the Inari Fire? We have Hida, we have Artifact Dagda, which can't really do anything right now. Could Evil Swarm Ouroboros, but that's not going to do much. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go go ahead and go for the... First turn, Crusadia Avermax. And then we go into a Dagda. Hope our, hopefully our opponent gets scared. Activate Witch of the Black Forest. What can we even search that would be good right now? I mean, I guess Tiamaton is pretty good. Uh, Tiamaton is pretty good. The Barrier Statue maybe as a follow-up. I guess we can follow up with Barrier Statue. So if they don't out our Avermax, we just normal summon a Barrier Statue. We could do that. Or we could summon Tiamaton, but I don't think Tiamaton really is doing much. So I think we just search the Barrier Statue. And we just go, uh, yeah, we make Crusader Avermax. Crusader Avermax plus we've got the Barrier Statue as a follow. If we had Double Summon, that'd be kind of crazy. Double Summon is one of those cards that would have been good a lot in general. But I actually, I'm really shocked we made this board with, uh, we made the Crusader Avermax with the deck that we did. I'm actually kind of almost impressed about, about it myself. Now, if we only had one more, one more Summon, that would have been great. Yeah, Barrier Statue as a follow-up. I know it's not like the best follow-up because you know, they'd have to uh, break the board. But we'll, we'll see what they have. We'll see what our opponent has. And we'll see what we can successfully do here. Crusader even Max is not nothing, right? He's, he's got protection. He shuffles a card away. He, he does some stuff. So at least he's pretty good. And then he, he he's very difficult. And there he goes, our Crusader Avermax. They already kaijued us. Let, when we check their deck afterwards, I would activate this, but I, I'm just, I'd be losing if I did. Uh, we're going to check their deck afterwards, and we're going to find out that they've got one Gamma Seal, and they happen to draw it. All right, so they drew the one of Foolish Burial Goods. It happens. Nothing we can do about it. This card honestly shouldn't even be at one in Master. Well, it should be at three. Uh, I hate when there's like there's like cards that are hit on the ban list because of tier limits. They shouldn't even be hit. On the balance, he's going to send this, which he can add a Vizus card from his deck to his hand. Like I said, we do have Crackdown, but I guess we'll have to see how much we can really do with that. He's going to add the Field Spell, which is pretty good. All right, he's going to use the Tier Limits Grief to special summon a Tier Limit monster from his deck or graveyard, uh, which is pretty good because he can then just trigger the fusion summon of that card that's a pretty good card uh, he's gonna activate this i guess he can't trigger it i guess he didn't trigger it he's gonna add the pierino perlino perlorino 
And then he's going to summon this. I don't have uh, an ash or anything, so it doesn't really matter. I can't really do anything. I can't steal his monster. And he's got multiple cards to a fusion summon with anyway. So whatever he sends, he's going to be able to fusion summon. So he's going to send the Havness. He has Havness. He has Merly. I mean, screen. And uh, he's got other cards at hand, so it doesn't really help to do anything right now. I've been playing against this deck so much. It's it's one of those decks that's just really kind of annoying to play against. But I get uh, this guy, I, I'm enjoying a lot more than the other guy in terms of playing against him because the other guy just kept getting lucky. And uh, now, fortunately, we have Crackdown, so you just summoned three monsters here. But I, I let me see. I, I got to see what's going on here. I, he's summoning, I think, the one that that can target and 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 spin back or something like that. Target one card. Your opponent control shuffle it into the deck. He's going to target our face down. And uh, we lost this duel. There's nothing we can do. Yeah, he's going to shuffle. He's going to shuffle two back. I mean, we could activate this. It doesn't, I think, do anything anyway. And uh, we're going to take his monster. But it's going to shuffle back and then it's going to give him back the monster. So we're going to move it over here. But obviously when this card gets shuffled back anyway, uh, the monster just will go back to him. Yeah, so I, well, I'm going to scoop this one. I know there's going to be people. Don't scoop. There's still hope. Uh, there, there's no hope there. Um, there is no hope in that situation. We have a barrier statue, and he's not even done. He's not even a part of the way done with his turn. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent is going first. They've got Sword Soul. Uh, it depends which Sword Soul deck they have. They started with the Strategist Long Wand, which is, I guess you kind of want to see them when they start with Long Wand, because Long Wand is... Like, means they don't have Moe usually. I mean, or they could be taking the alternative strategy and trying to uh, get to the uh, Baron de Fleur before they can get into Beard. So maybe they're doing that. Also, we don't know if they're playing the structure deck or they're playing a fully constructed deck. We don't know. So I guess we'll see which one they're playing because there are a lot of people just running around with just the structure deck of Sword Soul. Baron de Fleur, so they are not playing the structure deck, or maybe they are playing the structure deck and they've got a few extra cards. But overall, uh, this is looking kind of tough for us. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, based on this hand, this is this is looking a little bit a little bit rough. I'm not gonna lie. And uh, I'm trying to think what we can do here, but we have to out a Baron de Fleur. Crackdown and Dimensional Fissure. So between one of these two, we can count. You know, we can out it. Uh, max C, not what you want to see, but it's Max C. So now we have Small World. Let's see, can we Small World into anything? We don't play Kaijus anymore. So, I mean, we do have a Kaiju, but we don't play it. We could Purple Poison. And I think Purple Poison basically outs. Yeah, Purple Poison will basically out the Baron de Fleur by itself. No matter what we do. So I think... Purple Poison's probably the best bet, and then we've got Crackdown and Dimensional Fissure, or Dimensional Prison. Alright, so we're going to activate the Small World. Uh, we're going to use the Familiar Possessed. We're going to Ash us. That sucks. Uh, so all that thinking was for nothing, because they just Ashed us anyway. So now I guess we just... Honestly, I think we Normal Summon the Barrier Statue, and we hope to God that they pop... The barrier statue with the Baron de Fleur, and I think that's our best bet. We're winning in tech, yeah, winning tech. Oh, here we go. This guy's got an answer to everything that I possibly have. Uh, we're technically winning in card advantage, but it, it doesn't matter because we don't actually have any cards that can out what's on the board right now. Yeah, we just we just kind of lose this one. There's no way we can win. I know it's one Baron de Fleur, but this guy seems to have the answer to everything. He's going to target, destroy something. He's going to destroy the face down. I mean, I can chain it, but it doesn't matter. Hopefully, he's just dumb and just chains his card for no reason. Because that sometimes does happen. People are just stupid. And they think their card... Yeah, see, this is a perfect example. But sometimes, it doesn't matter how stupid you are. If you have Baron de Fleur, you can still win duels. Because it's just such a good card. So now his negate's gone, which is nice. Um, and the barrier statue's still on field. And he, I guess we're dealing with one Baron de Fleur. That's all we have to out is one Baron de Fleur. But unfortunately, it is a difficult card to out in this kind of environment in our deck. It's going to end phase again. We need to draw an out to this. Otherwise, we just kind of lose. Penguin Squire. 
is not an out to Baron de Fleur. Actually, it is an out to Baron de Fleur. It is literally... No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. For a second there, I was like, it is about... But no, it's not. Because I can't make synchros other than, than that. Uh, other, I can't make non-water synchros now that I think about it. Because I was going to go into this, and then that would have been an out to Baron de Fleur. Uh, but... What can we actually make that's an Alta Baron de Fleur? We can use Diamond Dire Wolf or we can make Time Thief. And either one is totally valid. Uh, then we can also make... No, we can't. We don't have any fires. Yeah, so we can make Diamond Dire Wolf. I think Diamond Dire Wolf is pretty solid. Or we can make Time Thief. Uh, we can also... We can't make that, but... Now, again, it's Diamond Dire Wolf or... Yeah, I, I think Diamond Dire Wolf is just a smarter play right now. I mean, it, it, it literally outs it, so... I'm going to activate the Penguin Squire. Set that. Activate the effect. Change the level. Yes. Reduce it by one. Activate. Flip this. And then we make a Diamond Dire Wolf. If I can make something else, I would, but Diamond Dire Wolf is the only thing right now that has enough power to get rid of this. Make Diamond Dire Wolf. And then we can deal with his Baron de Fleur permanently. And it's gone. Detach. Doesn't matter. Destroy itself. Destroy this. And the monster's gone. So now we just pass on that. We're both down to one card. We gave up so much card advantage to, to break such a small board. But it happens. Nothing you can do. This guy did draw like every card that he possibly needed. I mean, he had, like, Cosmic for my trap card, he had Maxi, he had Ash Blossom, he had everything. Well, everything against us, which, you know, doesn't have to be particularly much. We've got to hope he just keeps not drawing anything useful. Alright, he's going to go to End Phase, that's good to see. End Phase is fine with me, Lightning Vortex is decent because he doesn't have a Baron de Fleur. This has, like, no attack, so I think we just set it and then maybe next turn we flip summon if we need to but this has more defense than like a moe but if he draws a moe we're, we're already screwed anyway if he draws a taya we're kind of screwed because he's got two worms in grave so it, it doesn't really protecting our life points but barely yeah he drew a Mo moe he's gonna activate the effect to reveal i imagine now he's gonna go into she shall he's got Vashuda. This guy's got pretty much everything he needs right now. Alright, he's going to make the she Shao. This duel was kind of interesting. This guy just kind of had an answer to everything. Which is reasonable. And now he's going to do the advantage loop. This is where we, we actually usually lose the duel. We had it there. Like, we had a close... Depending on what we drew, we could have possibly won. But the second they start involving advantage into this, we just kind of lose. Because now he's going to activate this... And this is going to summon him that other dude. Uh, the big monster. The one that's level 10. The one that can't be destroyed. Well, it can be destroyed, but he can protect it by banishing a card from, uh, I believe, the graveyard. And then he gets when a card's banished, he gets to banish an additional card. It's 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 crazy. Now he's going to bounce our card. And if I do the math correctly, we, we lost this duel because he's about to summon a monster that's 3,000 attack. Again, somebody would tell me, hey, stay. You have a chance. I don't have a chance. Uh, but yeah, he's going to summon more than what we have. Alright, we just lost a coin flip, but our opponent actually made us go first. Uh, our hand is looking kind of solid. Got Small World and a hand that's pretty good with Barrier Statue, I believe. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and activate Small World. And I'm going to reveal this. And I'm going to try to get to the Barrier Statue, which would be any level 4 that doesn't have a similar stats to it. So something like this would probably get us to a Barrier Statue. So we'll reveal that, and we'll get over to the Barrier Statue. And I think we just... Barrier Statue and Paleozoic Dinomiscus and Messenger of Peace. I think we just do that stuff. So now we set the Paleozoic and just pass Horn of Heaven. They're not going to be summoning under Barrier Statue anyway, unless they're playing Fire Kings, which I just looked at his sleeves, and knowing our luck, he is indeed playing Fire Kings. Which, if he is, I'm just going to scoop because... No matter what you guys say, that deck, we, we legitimately cannot beat that deck. If if they have their engine in, in, in play, like, we just, we cannot beat a fire, uh, um, we cannot beat 
a, a wanted deck or whatever wanted snake eye we just cannot beat that deck they have every answer to every card that we could possibly have even if i picked out the best hand i possibly like if, if they let me pick my hand i still cannot beat their deck because it's just they have the out to all of our best strategies they can out the barrier statue they can out the uh they are gonna they're gonna only run doesn't even affect them they can out barrier statue by placing in our back row if I picked our very, very best deck, they would still be, like, our best hand, we'd still, they'd still be able to beat us probably the majority of the time. Oof, our opponent scooped. I don't know what they were playing, but they scooped. Uh, the Barrier Statue Messenger of Peace was way too much. Connection failed, we know what that really means. Uh, we've got four Legacy tickets. Hopefully we pull something crazy. Hopefully. Alright, so this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing a Dragon deck, a pure Dragon deck. They absolutely had nothing against the Barrier Statue because all of these are either little monsters or big monster, either little monsters that special summon big monsters or big monsters that need to special summon themselves. And that was not going to fly. And uh, I wish it kind of drew a different hand because this looks like it would have been a, a fun duel to play against for a few rounds. But a win is a win. Alright, let's open up this pack. It's not glowing again. A lot. I think every pack was actually one pack was glowing, but most of the packs today have not been glowing. Uh, we've got Morph King Stiggy Gel. Uh, okay, this is interesting, but really just morphine stuff. Ojama Black, a new Ojama. Uh, we've got the Skeletal Mayakashi. We don't really have too many Mayakashi things to really play. Another Gizmek. I don't think this is the one that can really be usable for us, but I gotta read it. Uh, so this isn't bad if we pull some other Gizmeks, but right now it's not really usable. Flower Cardian, not gonna work. Uh, this is a Kawaki Mero card, not going to work. Rain Angel Ritual, not going to work. And Perform Pal uh, Dancer is not going to work. More than likely, this pack was a complete dud. Nothing really usable for us at all. all right, let's open these Legacy Tickets. We've got a ton of them, so let's see what we get out of these. I've been thinking about possibly saving Legacy Tickets till the end of the episode, but this card's like historically bad. Uh, yeah, if it's attacked by a light, its, it's defense is halved. <laughs> It's already weak, and it gets even weaker. It's just, this card's terrible. Uh, Nature's Reflection. I don't think this would really help us. All right, next pack. Let's see. We've got Photon Chargeman. Uh, not really usable either. And then we've got Jinzo Lord. We need Jinzo, so we can't use in Jinzo, if I remember, is a UR. Maybe it's an maybe it's an SR. I don't remember, but it's not. We don't have it, that's the point. We can't craft it even if we did. So it's all random anyway. This is a Necroz card, it's not gonna be usable. Uh, this is a ritual for a ritual monster that I think is 1850 attack and level six. So I don't think that's gonna work. Noble Eater Bug, not gonna work. And then Chain Thrasher is not really usable for us either. So that was a complete and total dud. Everything was a dud. This stuff was a dud and the stuff before it was a dud. But to be fair, it was a pretty unearned win anyway because our opponent just scooped from a barrier statue. So. It, it, it was a major, 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 major dud. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is looking, honestly, underwhelming, super underwhelming, because we just have an Ad Emancipator, Arborea. We don't have anything really to go into here. Uh, we just, I mean, we guess we just normal summon Ad Emancipator, activate it, hope our opponent wastes a hand trap, and then set three cards and pass. I literally think that is the best that we've got here. Um, not the best, not the worst hand, but... I mean, it's definitely good. I mean, we've got an interruption and interruption and, and two interruptions that return back. Uh, we drew our two tuners. These are only our only two tuners in the deck, which really, really sucks because uh, since they're the only two tuners we have in our deck, uh, we can't even synchro summon because they're both in play. So we're going to reveal five. None of them really matter. They go back to the bottom and then we just set five and pass. If our opponent has some kind of back removal, we just lose. So we'll just end on this, and hopefully it's good enough. This is one of those hands that would have been sick with Barrier Statue, but unfortunately we did not see the Barrier Statue. All right, so our opponent seems to be playing Pendulums, which is not a deck that you want to play against if you don't have a Barrier Statue with us. Barrier Statue is the thing that really equalizes the Perform Pal matchup or the... Uh, pendulum matchup but when we don't have like a barrier statue against this deck we usually will lose but i guess we'll see this was like i said this was a really awkward hand like at least a time thief would have been decent but arborea just did nothing for us sometimes arborea really does help because she helps us go into level 
you know, bigger singer. She helps us go into this photon dude, the the Galaxy Zeta guy, and he's a pretty good card. But obviously, we got a little bit unlucky here. And he's only a rare. This is a really good rare, actually. I never even like thought about it. Summons three cards out. Uh, we can literally. Banish two and steal one. Like that's what we can do before he does anything. That's what we can do if we want to. But I guess we just kind of wait and see what he does. He's got the monkey board. I'm trying to think what to do here. Like I said, we can we can steal two. We can steal two and banish one. And then he's got. I don't think he's got any follow ups because I think this is pretty much it for him. And I think that's what we're gonna do. A uh, monkey board. Yeah, I think we're gonna steal steal one. Steal one, and then, yeah, like I said, whatever I just said before, I think we're going to do that. Uh, we can take this, but we don't have any synchros to make or any X seeds to make. We can link it away, but I don't think that's really all that great. I think it's better to actually steal one of these like this dude. All right, so we're going to steal this dude, and then we're going to activate the ledger book to banish the other two. So we're going to banish this, and yes, we're going to banish this. So we're going to banish two, and then we're going to steal one. The other one we're going to take and put right here. And then we can, next turn, we can make our rank four with the others. So that's pretty good. So he already pendulum summoned. Nothing's on top of his extra deck. And he's got the Sky Irish. Your opponent cannot target uh, with card effects. So he can, still, he can still play here. If he manages to squirm his way into something else, we do have the Forbidden Chalice if he manages to squirm into something else. So he did not normal summon yet. He's going to add the app Phantasmal, two cards in your Pendulum Zone, special summon from your hand. So he can special summon this next turn if he wants to. The Phantasmal Dragon. It's a pretty good card, honestly. This is honestly a pretty good card. He's going to go to end phase. He's going to get his monsters back wherever he wants them to go. And then he's got the Monkey Board and the Silver Castle. Got two cards back. Tiamaton's pretty good. Tiamaton can win this actually for Tiamaton literally can win us this duel. Um, so we're gonna special summon Tiamaton, and we are definitely never ever ever. Oh shoot, can he just can we destroy his card? Your opponent cannot target. Okay, that's good. Okay. I think we can actually win this now. So we're gonna summon Tiamaton right here. It'll destroy this column. Right, it'll destroy it, and now this column's locked, so he can't ever pendulum summon. That's incredible. Okay, great, fantastic. Now we have Arborea, which we can keep this out of the loop if we want to, or we can. Uh, we know what he's got in his hand, so there's no point to bait anything. I'm trying to think how do we out this thing in the most efficient way possible. I think we summon this out, and we go. Oh no no no! no. Let's see. Actually, if I activate a spell, I can bounce something to his hand. But bouncing something to his hand is, like, worthless in uh, in this deck. I actually think that the best thing to go into is... The best thing to go into is actually Zeta. So we're going to go 1 and 2 to go into Zeta. And like I said, we absolutely must keep this on the field. And now we go to Battle Phase... I just realized this has a decent amount of attack. So we attack over this. It says 2500 attack. So that'll go to the top of the extra deck. I think we can activate this. It comes back during your next standby phase. We can move this out of the way and then attack directly. But, I mean, is that really that important to do 1500 damage? I, I think so. Let's do it. And activate Zeta. And then we're going to attack directly with the Ad Emancipator. And the other dude. I just realized we had Tiamaton. We could have attacked with anyway. But I guess this is just... We're doing a little bit more damage this way. And then we just end on this. Like I said, we just end on this. He's got one monster that requires multiple pendulums to be in play. To summon. So that card's pretty much dead. And then he can't do any pendulum plays. Because we locked him out of this zone. He can't activate anything in this zone right now. He cannot activate pendulums. Uh, I can't believe we actually managed to pull this off. We floodgated our opponent with Tiamaton. The he's just been the like unbelievably good for us for so long it's kind of crazy. Alright, he's gonna activate one pendulum scale here, which is fine. As long as he doesn't have purple poison, we're probably good. 
purple poison is the real card we really have to like actually worry about. He's gonna destroy to add. With the sky iris, he's gonna destroy to add. Like I said, purple poison is the one. The one it's the card that we have that we really don't want him to see because purple poison can can out the iron dragon. He's gonna add odd ice fusion. Okay. Which I mean he's got one monster, right? Was I mean what does that fuse with? Monsters from your extra deck. Ah oh, man, that sucks. So you might be able to out this Iron Dragon now. That really sucks. I should have I should have just saved the uh, the other card. I should have just saved the other card. I should have saved this. I I, I don't know why I, I I didn't for some reason like acknowledge that this card was on the board. I should just attack then attack then I wouldn't have had to do that. But obviously this card's pretty pretty good. We could have just banished the monster he's about to summon. It's probably going to be a negate. Yeah, Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. I don't really have an out for this right now. I mean, I have the Forbidden Chalice, but I don't have an out to this on the field right now. He's going to return a monster. Please return Tiamaton so I could use it again. <laughs> he's going to return the Ad Emancipator. That's fine. All right, he's going to go to battle phase. We're going to lose Mr. Tiamaton. I know his other card is that Phantasmal dude. I wish he had just a little more attack right now, but he does not. This does negate an activation. All right, yeah, this does negate an activation by shuffling away a card from there, which is pretty good, but we do have technically the out. Broken Line's pretty good, actually. Broken Line is kind of nice because we can out this with Broken Line. This is why I love Broken Line. Broken Line's a really good card. Um... Yeah, Broken Line's awesome. Uh, we literally have the out to this card, so we're good. So we're going to... Do we summon this? Do we have a point to summon this? I, I think so, right? It's, so we summon this out. We can attack first. We're going to force this negate. We're going to Broken Line it, and that's good. So we have a few different plays here. All right, let's enter the battle phase. We're going to finally attack over this dog. We don't need to do anything, we just attack over the dog. And like I said before, because we're going second, Broken Line does come up very well. So we'll set this here. And I think we just pass, actually. Yeah, I think we just pass. In our, our opponent's turn, we actually have the ability to out this Vortex Dragon if we want to. We're just going to see what else they have, see what other plays they have before we make any commitments. But Vortex Dragon is, is basically toast as long as we play this out right. I'm just waiting for him to summon any other monster, and then I can get rid of this. Destroy one card. He's going to destroy his own Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. Alright, so I think I can actually stop this. And if you do, I think I can actually stop this. By forcing him to activate this Vortex Dragon. So I'm going to activate the Psy Frame. Target the Vortex Dragon. And I'm going to force him to activate Vortex Dragon. And then I'm going to destroy Vortex Dragon if he responds with... The broken line. Perfect. So he's going to respond with the Vortex Dragon. So now we can respond with Broken Line. And the chain is over. And the... This spell is dead for the rest of the turn. So Broken Line is going to destroy his monster. And uh, this is going to not banish itself. And then he can't search off of the Sky Iris. And one of his cards is that Phantasmal card. That isn't doing anything unless there's two cards in the Pendulum Zone. I forget what it's called. But you need two cards in the Pendulum Zone. Otherwise it does nothing. So this card's dead for the turn, and then whatever else he's got in hand, he's got in hand, but he's got to deal with the cards that he's got. He's going to activate one Pendulum card. Again, if I remember correctly, the other one is that Phantasmal card. Target one other, add it to hand. That's pretty good. Yeah, this is the other card he's got in hand. This is zero scale. This is a one scale. He's going to add the Fusion back again. That sucks. I mean, let's see if he plays another... Another Vortex Dragon. He probably does, knowing this guy. He's a little too close for comfort, this duel. Actually, it's fine if he uses Vortex Dragon again. Uh, because we've got... Um, no, he's going to summon this thing, whatever this is. Must be Fusion Summon. Wow, this card's pretty good, too. So he can copy our effect... I mean, again, it, it's he can copy our effect and do piercing, which I imagine he's going to copy Zeta. But if he activates Zeta, he's getting rid of his own monster. Oh, he's going to copy Vortex Dragon, target one other monster on the field or in the graveyard. So now he's got Vortex Dragon's effect. He has the negate. I don't even know. I, I can't really. Until the end phase, so there's nothing I can really do there. 
It says here that he's already used this effect, which means he can't use it again. Which means if I activate this, he actually can't respond. Technically, so we're gonna wait till damage step and then we're gonna use this. So declared attack is fine. Battle step is fine. Uh, we're gonna activate Forbidden Chalice now to use it on our own monster. And he can't negate it because he already used it. Even though he copied it, he technically used it. So we outed his monster. That was good. That was a little bit of ruling knowledge in there. Uh, that was... <laughs> we, I can't believe we just worked that one out. Wow, that was incredible. We just need a little more damage. We're at 44. So we need just a little more damage and we win the duel. That is not enough, is it? No, it's not. But, I mean, it's not a bad card to draw off the top. So we're going to normal summon that out. And I think we just go to battle. I mean, we can go into Harpy slash, but that's... you can actually go into this and get rid of the stupid Sky Iris because it actually is putting in a lot of work for him. And I think that's probably what we have to do. Go into Time Thief too, but actually, is that game with Time Thief? Game with Time Thief. I don't think there's a way to game here. Actually, I we can go into yeah. I don't think there's a way to game here. Not with the way we space things out. There's no way to game. But I think that this is actually probably the best card to go into the Sioux Ship. But Sioux Ship, yeah, we go. I think Sioux Ship to get rid of this Sky Iris. Now let me check if this has a graveyard effect, because if it does, then that's not good for us. Okay, so Sky Iris, like I said, has been really good for him, so I think we're going to get rid of it finally. I'm going to go into the Sioux Ship using these two. We didn't get the search off of the Witch of the Black Forest, but it's not the end of the world. We're going to go into the Sioux Ship. We're going to attack, uh, use the effect, destroy the Sky Iris, because it's been giving him way too much. Way too many resources, and then we just pass here. And we do have an interruption. We have the Psy frame left. So if he special summons anything, I think, like I said, the only thing he has left is that Phantasmal guy. And Phantasmal is not bad, but he has to have Pendulums in play in order to actually use it. And until he does, it's it's kind of dead until then. It just depends on what he draws right now. Or he's going to activate Mr. Phantasmal Dragon, which is a 4 scale. And then, oh no, this is the Phantasmal, a zero scale and a four scale, so you can summon a level three out, which he doesn't have any anyway. He's going to go to end phase. All right, that wraps it up. That will wrap up the duel, Penguin Squire. It doesn't matter what it is because the duel is wrapped up anyway. So now we just go to battle phase and uh, win the game. That's it. I don't think he has anything left. That was a really good game. That was really fun. Uh, I think we used a lot of cards really creatively. That was a very fun duel. I enjoyed that. All right, we are ranking up to... Gold 2, so we're, we're really moving up these ranks pretty quickly, and then we've got a Legacy Ticket and Grave Digger's Ghoul. Out of curiosity, this is what our, our, our opponent was playing. They had that Phantasmal. I'm, I'm, they, they were obsessed with this car. They kept it in hand no matter what. They searched it for no reason. Uh, they've got a few Royals, actually, of this deck, which is cool. And then they've got the Arc Pendulum. It's a pretty good card, too. Yeah, pretty fun deck to play against overall. All right, let's open up this Master Pack. Let's see what we get. We didn't see a glow, but who the hell cares? Half the time they're lying anyway. Uh, we already have this card. Velcanosaurus, Venom Serpent, probably not a good card. Just places a Venom counter, not good enough. Dragon Knight of Creation. This card's not terrible, but a little too slow. Uh, Dragoonity. This is one of the newer Dragoonity cards, but we don't have a lot of Dragoonity cards. Uh, this is another Digin. We have so many Digins, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's not really that great. Uh, Harpy Lady, another Harpy Lady. We have two copies of this now. This is just regular old Harpy Lady. Not bad, but just... Uh, Blackwing, already have that. And then Haunted Zombies. Uh, this card's not bad, but we don't have enough zombies to really use it. But it's not like a terrible card. Overall, this was kind of a dud. Nothing really here that is uh, super usable. Okay, let's open up this Legacy Ticket. It is glowing, that's cool. So, we'll see what we get out of here. Uh, one's glowing, yeah. Magicians Unite, I think this is... Control two or more attack of a spellcaster. It becomes 3,000 attack, one of them. Uh, I mean, we do play a somewhat of a spellcaster deck, so... But it can only one of them can... That's too crappy, that's not good. Then we've got Gauntlet Launcher. I've never even heard of this. Two level six monsters. Detach one material from this card. Target one monster. Your opponent controls destroy it. That is so slow and bad and two level sixes and we don't summon level sixes like that like i don't even know what deck this was intended for but that is not really that i mean it's a it's a decent rank six but it's just like rank sixes in this challenge are like kind of hard to summon so like am i really gonna like give up like two bestials to summon this like it, i don't think so all right we just won the coin flip 
Uh, this might be our last match. We'll see. We just won the coin flip. Our hand is playable. It's got threatening roar, purple poison, which I think we're just going to set, and then set three, and then our opponent's taking forever to move to the next phase, but uh, they've got six cards in the extra deck. So it's either a noob or a super noob, so we're going to set three and pass. Noob with the structure deck, I imagine, or maybe an anime duelist. Anime duelists are always the best because it's a an absolute blast playing against them because you never know what you're going to get you're like you're, you think they're an anime duelist and then they get you with like evenly matched out of nowhere and you're like where did that come from uh they're going to activate a recipe which is the cheeseburger deck now i know why they've got six cards in their extra deck that explains a lot so they're going to activate the novella stuff so we're going to reveal two novellas and then your opponent chooses one, add one, shuffle the other one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This one destroys spawn trap cards, so I don't want him to have this one, so I guess we'll just do this one instead. All right, so now they're actually going to ritual summon. We'll see what they're able to ritual summon. We do have memories of an adversary, so I guess we're in a decent spot. Because memories of an adversary can steal one of their monsters. They summon out the this novella's monster, which is only 400 attack. Uh, he's gonna do this novella's effect. He's gonna re reveal three. Reveal five, and then add one. All right, he's gonna go battle phase. Uh, he's 400 attack. Obviously, I don't care. So, I mean. I kind of don't care, but at the same time, they all have really good effects. Where when a card effect is activated, it targets this card, or when it, this a card is targeted for an attack, you contribute one attack position monster on either field. Special summon one novella's monster. Is that cost? Is the attributing cost quick effect? You contribute one attack position monster on either field. So it's actually not cost. This card, and yeah, it's not cost anyway. I mean, I'll save this for later. I'll let him crash for sure. I'll let him take the damage. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it's not cost. I mean, that's that's really good. Because since it's not cost, I can just banish the monster that I like. I can just banish Time Thief, for example. And then this card's really good. You can target up to two, target two cards, put them draw every end phase. Really good. Really good recursion loop there. The the restaurant. Like overall, this deck is kind of good. We got a player that's maybe not so great, but like this deck is quite nice. I'm trying to think what to go into. Uh, I think we can give up Nahata because it's just not that strong. Yeah, we summon Nahata out. He does have some cards faced. He has a card face down, so we don't know what that could be. Here we go. Target one ritual monster, special summon one token. So he's allowed to tribute summon, right? Alright, so he's going to ritual summon if he wants to. He's going to summon a token that's similar to this. And then he's going to use its other effect, quick effect, tribute. And he has to use itself as, as material. But if I move it off the field temporarily, he won't have anything. So, I don't want him to tribute one of my monsters. I think the smart thing to do would be to activate this. Banish his monster. Because then I don't think... Well, he's still going to get the token, but I don't think he's going to be able to uh, tribute and then ritual summon. He's still going to get the token, the 100%. Okay, so now we switch this to attack. I think we just attack with what we've got. We don't go into Time Thief yet. We can't use this anyway, so... I think we just go to battle phase and attack over... Actually, he can ritual summon, right? He can send... Yeah, he can ritual summon technically right now. So I guess we go to battle phase. We attack over the token. Now he's going to activate this, which is fine. He's going to be able to ritual summon right now. Using the token. I don't know what he's going to be able to ritual summon, but obviously we're not going to redeclare because all of these things have effects when you attack them. He's going to summon... 
he's already activated this effect. So when I attack his monster, it'll just be destroyed. But he's going to be able to add one. Yeah, this effect's already been used. So, yeah, when I attack his monster, it won't really matter. Yes, I want to redeclare. I said I already, he already used that effect, so why he summon that one, I don't know, but it's fine with me. All right, main phase two. If I knew that was going to happen, I would have done something differently there, but... Okay, time to go with the Time Thief, just because Time Thief is, generally speaking, going to be the best. They can dodge around all of the nonsense of them getting tributed and all that stuff. So I think we just use Time Thief and we just pass. He's going to get his monster back, obviously, but... Things happen. What can you do? Has a quick effect at any time. Well, not when it, whenever his monster is targeted for attack or... Or... Yeah, targeted. So we're going to activate the Time Thief. Hopefully we get a Trap card. We get a Spell card. Spell card's not bad either, though. Spell card's not... Not bad. So I'm happy with the spell card. We do still have memories of an adversary. So if he summons a really, really good monster, we do have memories of an ad. Then activate another copy of the field spell. Add another recipe card. That's fine. He's going to add another one of the trap card. And so he's got another one of the spell, another one of the trap. Everything's everything's looking good on his side. Looking, looking really, really good for him. Okay, he's going to activate the ritual spell. So he's going to ritual summon something. He's going to summon the Novella's monster. A little, uh, pretty good looking meal. Like shrimp. Shrimp and grits. You can draw a card. And this one, when it's targeted on the field or targeted by an attack. So now he's going to use this. Reveal two Novellas. That's fine. These are the only two effects I'm afraid of because it can tribute our monsters. You can only technically tribute attack position. So we're going to give him the Pendulum. Technically, you can only tribute attack position because uh, if I if I put my time thief redoer in defense, none of this would really happen. But I guess that's a good thing to learn. Be able to add a recipe card. I should just give him the ritual monster. He's already seen it anyway. So he's gonna <laughs> search the card I added. All right, so I should just given him that from the beginning. Does this guy like not have the URs or something? Like I, I'm noticing, like every card he's got is like oh, never mind. That's a UR. All right, so he's gonna go into Dino Mondo. Obviously a very good card. Requires a ritual monster, but it's very good. Target one card in the field and one ritual monster. Shuffle them both into the deck. So he's going to target this. So I'm just going to respond uh, by activating Time Thief. And Time Thief. I'm going to use both effects of Time Thief. One, you know, protect myself and the spell card effect. We're going to also detach this. And we're going to draw a Tiamaton. That's pretty good because we can just... Just pop this entire column. Battle phase. Yes, we're going to definitely activate. Does this have an effect when it when it leaves the field? I mean, it does, but... Yeah, we're going to use it. We're going to activate Tiamaton. And we're going to pop this entire column. He can technically... He has an effect to tribute, but... He doesn't seem to be activating anything, so those are gone. And... Yeah, that's it. That's fine. I don't, I don't need to do anything else. Alright, so now our monster returns. He's going to go to end phase. He's going to be able to shuffle back draw. Which is a pretty cool mechanic that he's got available to him. This is a really, like, grueling duel. And now we're going to return Mr. Time Thief. Fortunately, I can't return him in defense mode. Uh, true goodies. What's dangerous, I think he has a trap card. Or does he? He set a card first, so he didn't... I don't know if it's the trap card that he's got face down. If it is the trap card, it's a little bit of trouble for us. Yeah, when a trap card effect isn't activated... Uh, he gets to sp uh, negate it and destroy the card, which sucks for us because we lose time. Oh, I guess he doesn't get to negate it. All right, he doesn't get to negate it. Um, now, how do we out this? If this gets targeted, hmm, then he can tribute our monster. He can tribute our monster if, if we get targeted, but like, how do we do this? Seems like our monster is getting tributed no matter what here. I guess we summon out the familiar possessed, and we can summon out something I, we can't really use this because again if i target his monster he can tribute and if you do special summon one novella's monster from your hand or deck that's a pretty good effect so diamond direwolf and defense can out this and then then he i will if i just don't have an attack position monster then we're good but again that's a little bit 
little bit sucky. Yeah, this deck's recursion is kind of crazy. So we can go to Diamond Dire Wolf, but then... Again, this is really annoying. Like, how do we out this dude? How do we out this stupid Novellus card? We keep Time Thief in, in the loop. That's, I think, what we do. So I think we summon Diamond Dire Wolf in defense right here. We switch Time Thief to defense because I think it can only tribute one attack position monster. Switch to defense. We're going to activate this. Uh, it doesn't matter what we detach, but we detach target itself. Target his monster. Can't respond. And I think we just pass on this and Time Thief just sits there and puts in work and hopefully we can manage to do this. We would need... A card that we really, really need is a few different things. I mean, there's a lot of cards that we really need, but... But I think one of the card that we could really definitely use is uh, we get a spell card. No, we get a monster. That's fine, though. It's fine. Monster's fine. Uh, one card that we could definitely 100% use is... Actually, the, the Sky Striker wouldn't be too bad. I don't even know what this card does. Reveal one ritual. Okay, so this card is would be good, but I mean... I don't even know how the ruling works on this because this doesn't even have a level. And if the, mo if the card is sent to the graveyard... And the monster is tributed. You can target one monster. Your opponent controls destroy it, which will never happen. I mean, unless he has a kaiju, but I don't have any monsters anyway. I don't, I don't see. A, and my monsters in defense, so he can't tribute it regardless. I don't really know what that actually does for him. It's gonna go to end phase. All right, good enough. He's gonna put back more stuff and draw. We gotta get some monsters into play right now. We definitely gotta get some monsters going. Uh, this is all fine. Like I said, we need some monsters right now. I could just use that effect at any time, anyway. Uh, dimensional Prison's not bad, actually. A target, it's not bad. We're gonna activate Time Thief. We have three Battle Traps that we haven't even used yet. We got another monster. That's pretty good. See, this is the UR. He would like to have that, but he doesn't. So I think this attack boosting and lowering doesn't actually matter. So I think we're just gonna go to a battle phase and uh, we're gonna normal some of the Dragoodies. If I had Barrier Statue, obviously I would keep it in my hand, but I don't. I'd bury statues. It would literally be checkmate. Like, I would... It's done. I don't think he has fires. Does he? Does his deck have some fires? This is a deck that should have been fire. I mean, they're literally chefs. But they're dark. Uh, now we just go to main phase two. And we set this face down. I think we just pass. We pass on what we've got. And Dragoodies can search a spellcaster. Or a warrior if it gets destroyed. So at least that's nice. We do, we've got some good stuff. We have Threatening World, Memories of an Adversary, and Dimensional. So, we're going to see if we can get a trap or a spell. That's what we're really aiming for here. we got another monster. It's unreal. This guy keeps going through spells. and All of his monsters are underneath our monster. Manju. This goofball. Nothing we can do about Manju. Alright, he's going to activate another card to equip to his own card this time. Nothing we can do there. So if he tributes his monster this time, he can destroy our opponent, our, our card, which, you know, our opponent can reveal one ritual monster. So this becomes the level of this Manju, which is fine. This is an interesting card. He's going to be able to destroy one of our cards no matter what. But I think it, it's a target. You can target one monster your opponent controls. He's going to target, so we're going to know what he's destroying. He's going to activate one of the ritual spells. He's going to tribute the Manju to summon something. And he's going to summon out the little novellas monster, this little dude. When a card effect is activated, targets this card. Yeah, it's fine. Target one spawn trap card. Oh, I wish you didn't target that one. So he's going to target one of our other cards. It's going to be Time Thief, obviously, which is fine because I could just activate Time Thief. And uh, just save it for a turn. So we're going to detach. It literally doesn't matter who because they're all going to the graveyard regardless. And then we're going to be able to... Resolve that, so we're going to lose the dimensional prison, which actually targets. So it act, it, it really doesn't matter because it targets. So it would have changed. It would have triggered one of his effects. So he's going to activate another ritual spell here. Sky Striker Ace Ray legitimately would be like such a great card. <laughs> Not, I don't know. Bestial Magnum would be pretty good too because it can add back Tiamaton. And Tiamaton is non-targeting destruction, but like Ray's kind of crazy right now. This card's kind of crazy. It doesn't target, and it just banishes. So if he attacks, good for us. Activate this. He's going to be able to excavate again. Which is fine. Gee, the Hungry Burger. It's always interesting to see the actual Hungry Burger. He's going to add the, the other Novellas card, the level 3. 
I don't know if this guy's just getting unlucky or what. He's going to go to end phase, which is kind of fine, kind of not fine. We really need a trap off the top to really seal the deal here because I, I need to be able to out this card somehow without targeting. But how do I out it without targeting? I mean, Time Thief would out it without targeting. Tiamaton is in the graveyard. Memory loss would be good if this was not that turn. All right, trap card, we win the duel. Literally, trap card, we win the duel. We need it. It's a monster spell. Okay, so that's not... I mean, it's not bad because we can draw, so we'll activate it. See what we get. Dark the Dark Charmer. Dark the Dark Charmer. Is not good enough here yet. I'm trying to see. How can we win this duel? We, we need to somehow win this, but I just don't know how. If we had one more level 4, actually it wouldn't matter anyway. Anything that targets, he can tribute this and one of our monsters, and then summon two novellas monsters. Yeah, and then he can do a bunch of other effects, which again, we're going to play around. So we're going to set this. I think we will actually just switch everything to defense again. And since his monsters can't be tributed, just set this all and just pass. I think we just pass on this. Should be good enough, and then we, we still have Time Thief in the loop to do stuff, so we have memories. Again, we're just waiting for him to attack so we can steal his monster or m move it out of the way. But he has such weak monsters, he doesn't attack. We're going to activate Time Thief to get another spell. I mean, it, it, it's good because we get the draw, but it's it's bad because we don't get to dodge any of the foolishness if he seems, if he happens to have it. We're going to activate the Novellus card, put it back. I, I can, might, I mean, I might as well activate Time Thief now, but end phase. Okay, end phase. Okay, end phase is going to shuffle back to... This is probably game now. Yeah, this is probably game. Because we have the memory loss. So when attack position monster activates its effect, we, we, this is game. Uh, we're going to activate the time thief to draw a card. And we're going to detach this. Goblinburg's pretty cool. Alright, let's see what we get here. Sakuratsu armor. It's whatever. Whatever. Uh, we're going to activate Time Thief. If we get a trap, we just win. We just flat out win the duel. No questions asked. Got a Manju so we can dodge stuff. Okay, so now we switch this to attack mode. Switch this to attack mode. Switch this to attack mode. Uh, special summon. I think we just summon. We can summon Ouroboros and then just win. No applicable effect. Yeah, we can summon Ouroboros. Or Sue ship. It doesn't matter what we summon. He can tr respond, but we have what's it called anyway. I think he, we're good no matter what. Ouroboros is going to seal the deal, I think. And Ouroboros is generally pretty good, so. Summon Ouroboros. Activate the effect of Ouroboros. Uh, detach a material. Use the effect to target a card. Your opponent controls return that card to the hand. Okay. We're going to target this, and if he responds, we memory loss. Yep, he's going to activate that. Respond with memory loss, and that should seal the deal. Alright, so that's going to resolve. He's also going to switch the defense, get negated. That should be game. So his monster returns back to the hand. We go to battle phase. Ouroboros helped us get here, so why not? Ouroboros sealed the deal. I also got Time Thief. Time Thief obviously helps too. That was a good duel. That was a great last duel. That was a fantastic last duel. Honestly though, our opponent should have beat us. I've played against that deck so many times. I finally understand how to actually beat it. You just leave monsters in defense mode and you can beat it without really having to do anything. It's good against attack position monsters. If you just leave things in defense, you can actually just win duels. Alright, so we've got two legacy tickets. Last duel of the day. For those of you curious, this is our opponent's deck. They could definitely fix things up. They should definitely like cut like this card, the contract card, and they've got a few things. To obviously, bump this up to more copies. They could fix some things up in this deck for sure. But I mean, in, in theory, this was a lot better than the deck that we had. Okay, final pack of the day. Let's see what we get here. It's not glowing again, but it doesn't matter because we pulled Solemn Judgment out of a pack that I don't think was even glowing, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got another sofa cord to add to our pile of sofa cords. We do have a lot. Plus, we have their link monster, which is quite good. This card's uh, our second copy of this. And this is a good card, but we don't have any of the other generator stuff that is needed. But, I mean, I'll take generators. They're a slow rarity deck. This is actually the only, the only normal spellcaster. This is the only normal tuner 
uh, monster that is a water that is level four. Actually, it's a good card. It's a, it's a decent, it's a decent tuner. Actually, we have to consider maybe playing that in our normal monster mash deck. Like I said, it's the only normal water tuner. So I used it in my Umi deck a long time ago. Dropsies. Uh, not really going to be using that. Angel 07. I remember pulling the Seeker Rare and being extremely disappointed. Uh, we've got another Evolosar card, which doesn't really work for us. Doodle Doo. Okay, we got two Prank Kids cards in one. And then we've got Manadium. Let's see if we can use this. Generic. Level 6 Generic. Alright, so this card's actually not bad at all, and we're going to probably find a way to use it. Um, it When it's Synchro Summon, you can target a level 2. In your graveyard, a level 2 tuner, special summon it, it's pretty good. Uh, this is a fairy synchro tuner monster. It is a tuner itself, which kind of isn't good because we don't really have any ways to do anything with it. Other than the fact, I mean, technically it's a level, the problem is we don't have, there's so many good cards that we have that if we had Baron de Fleur would be like super duper usable. This isn't just another, this is another, throw this right in the list. Uh, it's a level 6 it's easy to summon because we have level two tuners like we have uh the uh, the machine one i forget its name but like the G synchron I, we have the synchron that summons itself plus level four makes this we have uh the one that if we control a non-effect monster we can special summon rimrum again once again easy to summon this uh so overall super duper easy to summon good effect on it but the problem is like it we just don't have anything to do with it beyond this point uh if, like I said, if we had Baron de Fleur or She Shao or one of the good level 10s, uh, uh, Dis Batter, I forget his, yeah, Dis Batter, the, the brand, the, not branded, the, uh, the Dis Batter Dragon, uh, that would be good. Like, if we had any of the good level 10s, this would be like an incredible card. But overall, like, not bad pulls. Manadium's good. This is like maybe usable for our sofa court pile. Uh, this is pretty good. So we got some good stuff in here. Okay, final packs of the episodes are these two legacy packs. Let's see what we get out of here. They're both glowing, which means nothing in the legacy tickets, unless it's a rainbow glow, in which case it does actually mean something. Another Colonel C, pretty good. And Bolt Escargo. Wow, what a beautiful card. Uh, 1,400 attack, and it's level 5. But what a cool-looking card. Does this exist? If this exists, I want it. This <laughs> is such a cool-looking card. I hope this exists. Wow. What a goofy looking card. Wow, okay. And then the Colonel C-String. Uh, this is our second copy. It's a pretty good card. Summon two level four warrior monsters from your hand. Pretty good for the warrior deck, so nice to have another copy. And then let's see what's in this one. This one's also glowing, but probably means nothing. Let's see. Silver's Cry is a solid card. Target a normal dragon monster in your graveyard special summon. That's it, just any normal dragon. Doesn't have to be a blue eyes, doesn't have to be a level eight. Any normal dragon, that's a pretty good card. And then Amphibious, Amphibian Beast. Well, this card is another kind of good one. I used to use this way back in the day. Uh, yeah, good stats on it, but just not really usable for us. I wish we pulled that on like episode four because I would have used it. It's just kind of cool in terms of stats and stuff, but just not really usable in other ways. And Silver's Cry is obviously a good card. It's a normal dragon. We have a few different normal dragon support cards. We got to wrap that in our mind. We got to keep that in mind. But that's the end of the episode. Let me know what you guys think out of the polls that we've got. And uh, thank you for watching. La, 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 la.